Oh, let's go. It was actually like we had uh, we had pretty good views yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, we did actually pretty bang. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, did they? Oh, that's right. He was going to too. Yes, let's go. Based. Oh, there it is. Oh, and it was in person? Oh my god. Ooh. Now the question is, do we want to watch a relevance coverage of the Hassan stuff? Kind of feel like we do. But uh, oh man, he goes into everything. True, Hunter Hunter taking the W's, man. I swear to God, we'll we'll cover real stuff on this channel one day, maybe. One day, maybe. <laughs> oh, he goes. Oh, this is. Oh, he goes through the whole video. Oh, I don't want to watch this whole guy's whole oh, fucking video on the lab. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. Crazy how she. Uh... Yeah, we'll do we'll do we'll do Destiny's coverage of it, and then we'll maybe we'll watch the Hunter. Hunter and John Doyle. John and Doyle. Um, debate. Okay, that's what we'll do. So we'll mute this. We'll go here. Um, likes to invent all these new women. Has had sex with two of my friends when they were underage, Lymphe. These are like messages that she's posting like semi-public discord servers <laughs> so <laughs> unhinged both of those are probably Hinged. fake by the way oh what does that say lab drops false allegations against the song that destiny previously warned her not to do okay psychopathic losers doesn't wait it says rip omni laboral is that his Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the man on Twitter in a while. 
Let's keep getting uh -oh. down. Then why would you, first of all, you just <laughs> lied there. That first statement is a lie. Also, why did you say this? You can't do that. That is like not in the rules, okay? You're just a bad person, okay? You just lied and then you <laughs> followed up and said, Dude, these lab DMs are wild. That Hassan nuke? Which one? That never went off? That's not real. I don't. I'm almost positive that's not real. I'm just. I would just tell yeah, you to be. Yeah. I, th I thought it was way too much. Yeah. But again, why would someone say that? Well, because. Because they're evil. Because they have every incentive to. <laughs> oh, I just. I just. Wait, did you talk to them? I, I just. I just. I you know have... for. I just know. You just have to trust me. There are a few things I would say I know, and I know this one. <laughs> okay. Duns, I'm about to drop a Hassan nuke. Oh, oh she did this one okay, stream no, too. Damn it! Damn it! Oh, this is right. from this is a while back. Lab, okay. you're gonna end your whole fucking career. What? 155 likes. Yeah, you're pretty famous now. Damn! Look at you, son, getting those likes. What are you gonna do with all that dopamine? I've never had that much dopamine. That's not true, actually. Man, I can't remember what post it was that I. They got upvoted for me, but there was one that I had like 1k likes on something. I think it was on, uh, fuck. I think it was on, um, I think it was something I retweeted and count, or I tweeted and counterpoints retweeted me. And I think that was the most engagement I've ever had on a fucking tweet. First part was, I think it was like for some stupid meme thing. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, though, but, uh, so. Wait, which one? Oh, this, like, this one? Hey, if you have another video, link it to me. Link it to me! On this show, don't this. do it. Not in a good way. Literally, it's not worth it. I know. So but every stop. time his name is brought up, I'm, like, vibrating. Stop. No, Wait, you, you shouldn't be. Wait. Stop. <laughs> I've, Wait, I've, do you not like know, Hassan? Just know Hassan is well known in Los Angeles. No. Okay, hold on. Let's, <laughs> chill, let's chill, let's chill, let's chill, let's chill. Hassan's talking about Jeez. lab. We gotta hop over and listen for a minute. <laughs> okay, go for Anything it. Go for, for it. Okay. Take this f***ing friendship on fire with the other person. I'm gonna betray her confidence, and I'm gonna f***ing lie about her age. How insane is that? That is literally, like, the most unhinged thing literally I've ever lying. seen in my entire life. Oh, we haven't she even got to be on unhinged. Patreon about like destiny. Unhinged yet. And then randomly <laughs> there's like a paragraph about me. True. I'm like, I don't even know you. Why are you talking about me? W H what Omega is LOL. True. Why am I being sucked <laughs> into yet another <laughs> insane thing that I don't want to be a part of? What the fuck? Bro, he just shouldn't have he shouldn't have commented on it. He shouldn't have said shit. It. That, honest to God, is like career advice. He shouldn't have said anything about it. I'm glad he did though, because now we get to enjoy it. This, the worst part about this is that the worst part about this is that like this person makes it so that other people have an even harder time believing women. True, true, true. On their own. True. I heard this. I heard this clip, and yeah, this That's is the, the biggest thing. W. I'm gonna say this, and it's time. gonna get clipped. I'm gonna say this and it's gonna get clipped, and I'm okay with it getting clipped. Yeah, but like, crazy with the wind, but that's technically, okay. if you wanna be really crazy, people like Lav would give me leeway to abuse women. Because now, if somebody, if I were, if I was like, you know what, I think I've got like probably like a one or two rate buffer, I could probably get away with it. Because somebody would come out like, oh, it's probably one of Lav's friends, or oh, <laughs> here's another one, right? But like, I have a bit of a buffer now because if there's one bullshit accusation, people are gonna be less likely to believe the the future ones. You're, you're unironically like Making damaging yeah. the uh, you're damaging the scene for people to even come out with these complaints when you do like this. It is true. That time when like someone <laughs> remember that time when someone lied about Hassan? Yeah, women are unhinged. Am I right, fellas? Like that sort of thing. True. Yep. Pretty anti-feminist. It's so gross. It's so fucked up. Especially when Hassan, <laughs> it's Destiny Master whining. Um, especially when like Hassan didn't have anything to do with the um, any of this shit, and you're like, 
you're like dropping you're trying to drop a nuke on somebody that has nothing to do with it that it's not even like a really a nuke you're just uh, you just yeah you're making it way worse and then yeah you do let you do look on hinge and then even if you're and the worst part was is now even if you had like your original point was like legit about destiny you've called into question everything about your point because you've now you've now done the unhinged thing um in the eyes of the public so all it does is just absolutely destroy all your credibility absolutely just you nuked yourself god i'm such a fucking addict i'm looking for my nicotine gum i can't find it but <laughs> she's actually um, turning hassan back to nicotine look what this she's was done the, nuke the train was talking about yeah even trained it in even train with all of his like no because of me Hassan. And anger against it was me, because of me to, like, it was because i told him not to it was well because was, because like, even though you hate me end, i'm not half as evil as you think i am that this person is just like going around and saying inconsistent ass sh because train to it. and zerka were thinking like hmm i don't know man this is Aguirre pretty Gale, crazy thank you for the tank of the subs Destiny is on said that this stream. Uh, Can we just say <laughs> he's, he's off his nicotine? Can we just say for a bunch of for a group of people that is meant to be so sex positive, y'all use sex in the most neg negative, negative, life destroying way, and it blows my fucking mind. Holy shit! Even if I was single and ready to mingle, I would not engage with any person in this fucking space. Fuck that shit. Any sexual encounter that you have with somebody at some point will be weaponized against you in this space. Almost guarant fucking teed that'll happen. I mean, my general advice is probably like don't engage with really any any sexual nature inside like for a lot of the, especially a lot of the drama streamers because there'll be a time when that'll come out and be used as like a weapon against you. Even if you were totally in the right, um, which is pretty, which is pretty sad and pretty fucking disgusting. So. Uh, Destiny has said on stream that this Hassan room is bullshit. She has no proof of anything, and has a track record of being a lying. I'm guessing that this is the nuke that Destiny told John Zerka to ignore because it was bullshit. Yep, he just confirmed it. Like how fucking crazy. True. Yeah, she uh, has a history of serial reporting sexual harassment allegations. How fucking nuts. That these people just like literally talk about sexual harassment allegations like it's like nukes you know what i mean hey that nuke is not good this nuke is a good one we well, can use it whenever he you still want finds a way to sh me know, over it. even destiny's <laughs> like you know good one uh even destiny who sometimes will drop his uh his his otherwise uh charitable nature when it comes to sh like me even he's like bro that's crazy stop Repost and comment for context. DGG are here. This woman was a Destiny orbiter. She had been on Destiny streams many, time, many times before, and she has stated that she has some kind of nuke on Hassan. She threatens to drop it. Destiny immediately pleads with her not to do it. A few days ago, there was drama in the Destiny community, and this woman came out saying that Destiny is the Harvey Weinstein of Twitch. Says that he f***s <laughs> women who come on stream, makes the community sh** on them to traumatize them, and gets off on seeing his community traumatize women who come on stream. She didn't provide a shred of evidence to substantiate those claims. Apparently, she has also been bad-mouthing Destiny and spreading insane shit about him in DMs to complete strangers she talks to on Discord. So she was banned from the community and isn't allowed to appear on streams, nor are other people who orbit around Destiny allowed to talk to her. She posts this insane manifesto detailing her experiences, where she also claims that she drops a career-ending nuke on Hassan. The nuke is that Hassan had sex with someone younger than him, but it was completely legal. <laughs> True. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I can't. I gotta get my nicotine gum. <laughs> Poor Hassan. He's like, fuck it, I'm either smoking or I'm chewing nicotine. There is no in between. It's a giga chat move, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, what's going on here? Wait, can I ask, is trauma dumping a clinical term? I don't know. Now, remember, yes, everybody. Yes, clinically badass. 
this person, like, I don't know this person, right? I've never been around this fucking person. I have no idea who the fuck this person is. Turns out, the nuke is not even her. It's a friend of hers. So I had to, like, I had to do a little bit of digging because I'm like, that's insane. I've never had sex with someone under the age of 18 because I lost my virginity when I was 18. Like, it's not like I, you know, it's not like I even had sex in high school. You know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, all the so, defenses yeah, shut come up. up now. That's not kidding. a weird don't and nerdy something. time to lose your virginity for everybody who says that, okay? Whatever. <laughs> what the? <laughs> also, like, referring to allegations is, like, insane, too. That's not even the allegation. Um, someone younger than him, but it was completely legal. Right to bear arms. It was an act of moderate both Destiny and Hassan's in touch with them. Hassan confirmed or not. He responded saying that he had never had any sort of sexual relationship with her. That, that's not even true. Th I did not say this to RTBA. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Anyway. Uh, it doesn't. It honestly doesn't. Um, because it wouldn't matter if he lost it at, like, 25 right the age of the other party is still is what's being called into question not when Hassan like lost his thing but what he's saying is basically um even as a even as an underage person himself fuck I can't get this last one right um he's saying even as an underage person himself he never engaged in sexual activity so there's just no there's basically no arrow of credibility to what Lav is saying um, because he didn't he didn't engage in sex when he was younger. So all the people that he's had consensual sex with have been of like legal legal consenting age. That's basically what he's trying to say. Like no, like for example, like for example, I, with. I lost my virginity when I was fifteen, right? To somebody who was also like in the fifteen was also fifteen years old. Um, so when you when you talk about um, age of consent, the statement. I've had sex with somebody that was 15 is true with the understanding that I was also 15 at the time. Right. And that's kind of his, like what he's trying to say is, Hey, everybody I've had sex with was of age of consent because I was also of like age of consent. He's saying it in a very, very weird kind of way, but that's what he's, he's essentially saying. Yes. Also they were 19. Also I was, I think I was 25. It's been a long time. This was in 2017. She was not 17, okay? That's f***ing crazy. Oh, I know what happened. I bet it I hate talking moment. about shit like this. I hate talking about stuff like this because it's just, like, weird and gross and an invasion of privacy for other people. True! I already got, um, I already got uh, consent from the other party to talk about this immediately i was like 1925 is problematic though yeah i don't care like i don't <laughs> care that that's your opinion i'm gonna be oh, i'm gonna keep no. it buck 50 with you. I, I don't give a shit that that is like your opinion also it like you're literally uh -oh. we're not gonna have the problematic age uh problematic age gap discourse once again <laughs> okay oh no oh. i personally don't care i personally don't care 1925 that's fine totally you're gonna have you're gonna have sex. You're gonna engage in relationships. Who cares? Uh, I know Quiv Quibbles is in my chat. He'd be losing his shit right now, saying it's inappropriate. But um, I mean, you know, one-time sexual encounters is a lot different than having a relationship. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Boring. Also, to be clear, in uh, public discords, uh, Lav says there's two women, by the way. Kind of crazy how she likes to... Wait, now she's saying there's two women? Why wouldn't she come up with both when she did her little manifesto thing? See, this is, this is what I mean, is it's just like, when you keep piling onto a story, when you... I think he's called them, like, micro-leaks before. Um, it actually makes your story look so much worse. It looks like you're like holding information back, hoping people will believe um, the story that you're putting out. And if they don't, you leak a little bit more and then you leak a little bit more and then you leak a little bit more and you leak a little bit more. And then finally, when the majority of the people believe your story, you're like, ah, see, that was really the story. 
all along. Um, when in reality, I would say it just hurts your credibility. Because I think if you have the story and you're going to leak it, I think leaking everything, everything all at once is the actual, the most effective way to go. So I think the micro leaking kind of makes you look the worst. Crazy how she um, likes to invent all these new women. Has had sex with two of my friends when they were underage lymphae out. These are like messages that she's posting in like semi-public Discord servers. Jesus. So <laughs> Unhinged. Both of those are probably Hinged fake, by the way psychopathic losers who have only been discord kittens and have probably been groomed by like psychotic weirdos in discord who have never had like a human physical relationship with another human being that is a consenting adult so they have no understanding of how relationships like this can happen okay or hookups like this can happen or whatever which is precisely the reason why they are the absolute worst people to make assessments over because they're fucking delusional and there are plenty of them in my community and i yell at them quite frequently <laughs> whenever conversations like this come up okay there is no power dynamic in this situation uh -oh. at play in any meaningful capacity uh -oh. like uh it is just Unhinged. Unhinged. Okay, Chad, you're being gross and overcorrective here. I get that you want to defend Islam, but please do it in a tactful and respectful way. Man, shut the f up. What do you mean? <laughs> They're doing it in a gross way? This f sick freak, this sick delusional f freak literally came out and on a completely unrelated f post decided oh, to just... That was another thing. <laughs> he did the thing. He did the meme. Um, Another thing I wanted to say about this is for, like, if Lab is, like knowingly not enjoying the competitive nature of these communities i don't know why she would go out of her way to intentionally be combative with arguably somebody who has a bigger platform than destiny um because if you were if she is like if she is saying that the feedback that she was getting from destiny was way too way too much why would you seek to poke the bear that is hassan with absolutely n like a nothing fucking burger this is like this is that sympathy thing we were talking about earlier i feel like this is like this is where like my sympathy runs out for lav um and now i'm just seeing the consequences of somebody's actions like you basically reaping what you sow at this point um and I think it's more like she didn't get her way. Now it feels like more like she didn't get her way with Destiny. And that's why she's being so spiteful. Because it's obvious that she's okay picking fights with other communities that are way larger. Um, with nothing burgers. So. Lie. And, and <laughs> literally slander lying. Me and say that I did something illegal. And even in her own post, she herself said... Well, you know, she was actually young, but like, uh, you know, maybe it was uh, legal, actually. Because <laughs> I saw some of the shit that she said. She was like out there fucking saying, where the fuck was it? She was out there literally openly stating for whoever the fuck will listen to her. Sta stating that like... Oh, what was she stating, Hassan? Whoever the fuck will, will, will state that she was... Uh, whoever the fuck will listen, that she was just like... Where, where is it? Hold on. Yeah, get the logs. Leak them. Leak them. We want to see. Want to see the tails. Tails being spun. Where is it? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, what I saw. Like, this is from a while ago. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck it is. But it was like, she was in like Discord servers and shit. Uh, literally just... Lying, lying literally lying. Such a vibe shift from the Fear and episode. Yeah, yeah. The real moral failure is sex before marriage. Oh, here it is. Here, bro. Here, look at this. Uh oh. Femoid Jewish evil. This is from like some dude's Discord server. Uh oh. I think Hassan's outrage against everything is really funny because he slept with my friend when she was like 17 and he was 24. Yeah, I'm not dropping it, believe me or don't. She's never coming forward, so I'm not either. Uh-oh. Then why would you... First of all, you just <laughs> lied there. That first statement is a lie. Also, why did you say this? You can't do that. That is, like, not in the rules, okay? You're just a bad person.
okay? You just lied, and then you <laughs> followed up and said, I'm not coming forward with it. She's not either. If I would, I could believe me. NDA. Also a lie. Also a lie. I literally asked her. I was like, was there an NDA involved? Like, what the f*** is this? Like, you know, are you... Are oh, you, you mean Hassan's been messaging the per Like, he knows who the person is? <laughs> oh, no. Decimated. Decimated. Absolutely no credibility left whatsoever. Ugh. Ugh. That's really, that's really funny. You f***ing serving NDAs to your friends? She's like, no. I asked the other person that she's talking about right now in the most gross way possible. Chatters. Maybe if you don't know the full context of a situation, the don't jump to f***ing conclusions. Yep. I did. She's a full adult now. She was a full adult back then. <laughs> My stance is that it's not rape, but it's weird. Exactly. Hardly something to come forward about. True. But dropped it anyways. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a crazy take. She's like, my stance is that it's not rape, but it is rape, actually. Like, <laughs> the things that you're describing are rape. Okay? It would be statutory rape. Just funny. Nobody would care. I'm not showing proof or saying who it is. It's a nothing burger. <sighs> I feel like the Christian Bale the thing now that's what i'm feeling this was like months ago apparently wait is that a meme like the christian bale like american psycho what is insane about that what is insane about that is that this person <laughs> <laughs> nobody would care i'm not showing proof for saying who it is listen i got claims but i ain't telling you who said what and I ain't showing no proof. That seems to be the fucking lab mo. I don't care if people believe me, but I'm not. Sh I'm not. Uh, I'm not showing proof. Fucking wild. Absolutely bonkers, Magoo. Oh, Magoo, I might be so glad. <laughs> Is literally using, making up false allegations about someone that we both mutually have known for many many years okay just to try to get back this is the most insane part of the story we both know the person that she's talking about for so many years Oof. and she's just lying about a whole bunch of shit knowing thinking that neither of us will come out and say anything about it There it is. Ask the internet for you. Trick Labs Twitter replies? Uh-oh. Dude, she's about to get... Now she's about to feel like what it's really like to get blown the f*** up. No shit. How crazy is that? Wonder what she's been... Wonder what she's, uh... Wait, did she, uh, lie all the way in? Wait, did she? No shot. Did she delete her Twitter? No, no way. Lab, L U M. Oh, did she locked it? No. No, I tried. No, I tried the lab. I literally typed in her name. Loon E E E. Oh, oh, ho, ho. she deleted it. This account does not exist. Oh, 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 spaghettios. Deleted. That's wild. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. It's like, dude, what the f 
are you doing? <coughs> like, what, what are you doing? <coughs> Did you reject her in any way? Maybe she's a woman scorned. <laughs> I looked up. I, I didn't know who the she was so i looked up at our dms and i did find that she had reached out to me in uh in uh and in, in, on instagram like a while ago uh -oh. oh boy and no i did not respond to her after a certain point after a certain point uh-oh probably nothing happened i don't want to show you because like she mentions our mutual friend's name on the discord dms uh-oh oh. or not discord sorry instagram <laughs> blackmail but you are right on the money on that. How crazy would it be if Lab tried to blackmail fucking Hassan? Holy shit, that'd be fucking insane. She could have said she would never wear a Hawaiian shirt on Insta and gotten more clout without backlash. Yeah. There always is a fucking DM out there. It's it's another Mitch Jones moment. <sighs> Hold on. Jones. Jones. She like Jones. unprompted Jones. sent me a DM. She sent me an unprompted oh, yeah. DM and I looked at her story and she was in the bathtub on her story. And oh, you know, I just her titties. I don't even remember what it was, but oh, you here, remember I'll edit it. His boobies. Always boobies. When in doubt, Instagram is just boobies. Boom, 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 Mr. Jones. Come on, Mr. Jones. All right, now. <clears throat> hmm. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute, minute, minute. What an insane thing. Oh, this is a nice blue for this guy. Actually, let me see. Let me see. Let me see what. Hassan saw Lab's story. Does that mean Hassan was following him? Yeah, I'm Maybe. trying. I don't know. Did he reference that? Yeah, that is. Censor nice the name. It'll kind of blend in with the water a little bit, but it'll match the paint. How do I open this in paint? That's the real question. Yeah. Why isn't Mr. Girl protecting Lab right now? True! How <laughs> true! What a true statement! Yeah, her dad needs to get in there and protect her. Jesus. Why is Lab going after a sonnet so random? I have no idea it was so stupid of her to include that well it's pretty dumb okay but it, like here. like you said it goes it goes back to that idea honestly that she has no problems um wanting to fight with bigger communities so here because when i found out this was the person when i found out this was like a person saying insane shit I looked her up. I was like, who the f*** is this? Do I know this person? And I looked and I found that we had DMs. Okay? Oh, he was like, flirty RTBA. DM me. F*** you. <laughs> and um, I'm saying like, impressive. What other hidden skills you have? I'm like, a little flirtatious. I have the power to get random men and nice I DM job, from RTBA. the back to flirt with get me. Get shot the With f*** down. power comes great responsibility. I hope you're using it for good. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm, rec I'm very reckless with this power. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using it appropriately? Fuck no. I'm reckless. Hour. So far, so good, to be honest. Good to hear I'm not f***ing this up. I think we accidentally met in 2018 while you were on a FaceTime with... Bleep. I feel like I'm not making this up. It was brief. I haven't even an ounce of... I haven't even an ounce as hot as then I am now. So you're off the hook if you don't remember. Okay. And I think then she, like, asked me about... Home. Okay, so Lee, a little bit of flirting. Like, ah, you know, I wasn't hot. I wasn't hot then. You wouldn't remember me. I'm fucking hot now. You better fucking remember me now. Um, okay, that's that's a little that's a little weird. That's a little strange. But hey, flirter's gonna flirt. I get it. Hold on, let me gonna see. Flirt? I'm gonna be honest. I don't know why he would show these DMs. I feel like I don't think he's guilty based on everything I've seen in the background. But I feel like this makes him look weird. Like as soon as she brought up that friend's name, now he stopped responding. Isn't that a bad idea? A little <laughs> or why bit. would she? Why would yeah. he? <laughs> Doesn't that get oh no, don't throw us on <laughs> There's more DMs after that? Yeah, there better be. Yeah. Oh, I 
I'll just say, OMG, through. you're friends with that person, that's dope. It's also from 2018. I filled my head with endless amounts of useless shit since then, so that memory is long gone. She says she's a cool gal. You had to memorize the whole communist manifesto in that time. No more brain juice left for me. Which gun range do you go to out here? I just, like, stopped responding after that. So she just, like, changed the conversation. And then I talked about what gun range I went to, and she said she went there as a kid. And then the last thing she said basically was like, oh, no, I hope that they d that doesn't mean they got rid of it. I think there's a picture of my dad and I out there somewhere. LAX sucks. That's it. What a like, weird. That's, that, this was, this been was like very last random. year. I just stopped talking to her. Damn. Ooh. One thing to like that kind of now comes into my head as I hear this, seeing that Lav has reached out to um, other streamers and kind of pushes the conversation um, when she's still not, when she's not getting replies back, like she kind of changes the conversation and like instigates it it does make you it's a little now a little more questionable um when me and quibbles were talking about the like well how like sexually interested was lab in these uh in the situation with destiny like how much how much kind of responsibility does she bear for that relationship kind of coming coming to like a sexual fruition um seeing these dms now from hassan it actually kind of even throws it more into question like okay hang on she actually had she actually does have a pattern of engaging with larger streamers and in this instance engaging with a larger streamer that um isn't necessarily responding back to her she'll still try to engage with them even if he even if the other party is kind of not really willing to engage so I don't know about that one. That one's kind of that's kind of weird in my books, but as a kid, what did she mean by that? Like that's it. That's the last time we ever talked. That's the last time, which is a normal conversation. She asked me like, she asked me just like normal, uh, you know, questions, and I just gave her normal answers, and then we never talked ever again after that. Like, a little bit of flirting. Uh, just a little bit. Just a tad bit of flirting. Had no idea who this person was. Um, I think I remember. I looked her account up, and she had, like, a dude in every photo. So I stopped responding to her. Because I was like, I think this... I think she has, like, a significant other. She had a dude in every photo. So I was like, all right, this dude seems... Like, this is either, like, a gay best friend thing or a husband or boyfriend type thing. So I'm just not going to talk to her about that sort of shit. And then I just stopped talking to her. They're based. You know, like... Based Hassan, listening to Dan's fucking advice. Hell yeah, let's go. Dan with another W. See? The don't put yourself in that situation. Then you don't got to deal with the shit. Fucking Dan, always right. He literally went from <sighs> straight up flirtation to like me looking at her Instagram and seeing that there's like a dude in a lot of these photos to going, oh yeah, you know, uh, whatever. Damn, roasting her husband now. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. He's engaged. Oh, okay. Well. That's the CEO of Ridge Wallet, and he makes a million anyway, dollars a year. Do okay? not go to her fing social media accounts and do dumb shit. <laughs> I will literally. Do not. Okay. Do not go to her social media accounts. Which, by the way, wait, how old is she? Someone in the chat just said she was 23. She was 23 and you were 30. Would she be upset about that problematic age gap too? Probably. Oh. Ooh. The most charitable thing I will say in this circumstance, the yes. most charitable interpretation of this is that, like, maybe she was just unclear. Maybe she was just really unclear about the information that she thought she had. But uh, the absolutely insane thing. Unhinged, guys. And insane. And whack. Whack. Super whack. Okay, is that it? Is that it?
looks like it. Looks like that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Gross. <laughs> All right, let's listen to Hunter and John Doyle. And you've had a great time enjoying. Go them. fucking at it, yes. We are going to be debating gender roles. Specifically, should America return to traditional gender roles? And in the affirmative, we will have the Christian conservative, who is the host of Heck Off Commie on YouTube. And in the negative, we will have a left-wing YouTuber. I don't even know if I spelled his name right. Oh, a few years Ellie. ago, was actually a Republican hardcore conservative. Is Dan now Doyle. a left-wing YouTuber. Dan Doyle, hang so, on. So, everybody, please watch Republican have a left-wing YouTuber Ellie. who you may remember from a few years ago was actually a Republican hardcore conservative that is now a left-wing YouTuber. So, everybody, please welcome John Doyle, Hunter Avalon. Based, yeah, let's go. Hunter. Oh, this is... Oh, Pixie. Yeah. yeah now, before we start, I just want to quick the debate rules for both you guys. We will be answering the question tonight, should America return to traditional gender roles? You'll each have a 10 minutes to give an open statement, but you guys agree that he would do a 15 one and you would do a 5-minute closing statement. Uh, at the end, so we will have two segments and a crossfire in between. The first segment, each debate will get five <coughs> minutes each, and then another round, five minutes each, mm. and then we'll go to the crossfire. Then we'll have a second segment where we'll have five minutes each again, another five minutes each to respond, and then we'll have ten minutes of closing statements per debater. There'll be a 20-minute Q&A at the end. All questions are welcome, and anything's Ooh, all uh, up questions? for grabs. Yeah. What you we'll start a line right here, oh, and that's too creepy. that'll be everything. That's there are no you. prepared notes, but you can prepare your openings, and you do have notepads that you can write anything you want on. So, without further ado, John, let's kick things off. We are testing the audio. Can't hear it. Is that a yes? No. Very good. Well, good evening. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for coming out this oh. evening. Lord, Even those who came out in the in the protest to protest against Hunter and myself, the two cis white men. You know, these are the real revolutionaries, right? It gets a little bit cold out, <laughs> and all of a sudden fighting the fascists isn't so appealing. But these are the people who would have held Stalingrad, right? <laughs> no, but Hunter and I, you know, we had a real uh, sort of venom and sandman moment behind, <coughs> behind the stage. You know, I was like, look. What? You want to kill the SJWs. I want to kill the SJWs. Together, they don't stand a chance. Interesting. Okay, look, it's uncensored America, right? If you don't have, like, a playful death threat here and there, is it really free speech? <laughs> Probably not. But anyways, True. Uh, this is the most professionally organized event that I've ever done, and I know that Hunter said the same as well backstage. So thank you to Uncensored of America for putting this on. Thank you, of course, to the security for putting this on. Can we get a round of applause for them for doing such a fantastic job? So, the topic that we will be debating this evening is, of course, whether America should return to traditional America. gender roles. I believe Fuck that we yeah. absolutely should, and my opponent this evening disagrees. And so, for the sake of intelligent discussion, I would hope that we can avoid the sort of Here's sophomore characterizations of these traditional gender yeah. roles as oppressive and evil, because they aren't. They're quite the opposite, actually. Oh, Contrary true. to true the game. popular true. narratives, when America retained these roles, women were still working, they were involved in their communities, they enjoyed different hobbies and projects, they owned businesses, etc. But ultimately, both men and women under understood that their ultimate purpose was to raise boys to be good men, good husbands, and good fathers, and to raise girls to be good women, good wives, and good mothers. Those who tend to sympathize with the views expressed by my opponent tend to regard those roles as not, on, not only harmful, but as socially constructed. Therefore, I believe that the crux of this debate this evening <laughs> will be a difference of worldview, nature versus nurture, <clears throat> men just nurture, make more men. genetics Come versus on, that's, environment, that's it. what our role is here on Earth. What I, what I find the funniest about usually a lot of these conversations is the guys that are speaking the most about traditional gender roles when they themselves don't, like, don't at all participate in uh, gender roles at all. That shit is, that shit's funny. Where it's like, oh, men need to be better men and they need to raise these men and have these kids and have these families. And it's like, bro, how are you like, okay, that's cool. We can do that. Uh, what have you done to achieve that goal? And it's like, uh, oh, 
nothing, so you don't have kids, you don't have a wife, you don't have any of that shit. Instead, what you're doing is you're going around telling other people they have to do it when you haven't even started to engage in that yourself at all. So, women live your life with fear that your husband can cut you out ease. Yeah, I mean, that's the way they like it, right? They like they they like to smell the fear on the women when they're uh, when they're around them. That's what they that's what they enjoy. Um, it feels like a lot of these men also kind of want the like want women to be almost like uh, an extension of their mother, right? That's like, oh, my mom used to do these things for me, like make my like as <laughs> much as it is, you know. Eh, it's gonna gonna dig a little bit into the father-in-law on this one, not on purpose, but it's like that. Uh, you know, I want them to make my lunch. I want them to make dinner. They should be looking after the house, um, doing all these things. And the reality is, is like it takes two parties to do a lot of that shit. Um, both parties have to be willing to engage with um, with that practice. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be a tradcon wife, you know, live the tradcon life, live the tradcon life. But if you're not even going to live it yourself, though, you can't expect other people to live it as well. not sure what to do for the top and the bottom i was gonna do like a city i don't know maybe we could do some small houses i don't know I'm running out of ideas now you could just do like a weather elements etc with traditional gender roles gender stereotypes i would simply recall the supreme court precedents on pornography you know it when you see it you know we're all familiar with these the question is where do they come from those who tend to sympathize with my opponent would believe that things like race, like nationality, childhood, madness, age, intelligence, beauty, that these things are all social constructs, gender roles included, that they only exist because for whatever reason we, typically white men, have decided that they should. This is, of course, not the case. Men and women are fundamentally different. Their behavior is different. Nah, Their temperament. He's, he's going to – see, the thing is his argument, I bet you, is just going to be God. It's handed down to us by, like, God or, like, some kind of creator or some shit like that. Which is just fucking cringe. Um, I mean, the biggest question to him would be, like, if you if you had a society where men were the stay-at-home parents. Like, we did, like, seahorses. Where, you know, sure, the women, the women birth it, but then the men are, like, the major caretakers of children. Um... Would that ultimately be like a good thing for society? My guess is John Doyle would say no. Is different. And this is much more related to their biology awesome. than to their environment. Behavior yeah, is I biological. Think about what gender role even means. Gender as a word containing the gender? prefix gen, like genesis, generation, <laughs> generate, meaning coming to be, followed by der, like dermatology, taxidermy, referring to skin, referring to flesh. So gender literally means your biological <laughs> role in coming together and creating he just word associate himself into like referencing the Bible, man. Good for him. That's super impressive. I'm not even fucking mad on that one. That's that's unbelievably impressive. What does he even mean? Genesis, gender, <laughs> generate. Now let's talk about flesh. Flesh eating people, people birthing, birthing people, women. See, now we have it. Now it all fucking. Just meshes together new flesh Beautiful. creating life therefore any gender <laughs> role that you might have by definition would be your role in cultivating stable families and stable children and by extension stable societies our biological drives and instincts whether you look at it from an evolutionary perspective or from a religious perspective are oriented towards reproduction and because of that these gender roles and gender stereotypes are completely syndicated all throughout the world and all throughout history with so much difference between all of these cultures and all of these time periods so one of the biggest things that like a lot of these guys kind of miss is they'll go and they'll grant like the evolutionary aspect where they're like even evolutionary or biologically um it's geared towards reproduction it's like okay we can bite that bullet let's bite it it's good it's delicious what are you doing to adapt and overcome the obviously changing landscape of what it means to reproduce or have these functional relationships. What have you done 
to facilitate that change in your own behavior so you can continue to reproduce and exist um, beyond your years, right? The answer to honestly most of it is nothing. They haven't done anything because they don't believe they need to change in order to um, facilitate that, that reproductive style, which is funny um, because realistically somebody like myself who's obviously um, adapted and changed, right? I, I'm more willing to be away from traditional masculine gender roles and I have fruitfully gone forth and multiplied, right? There's another there's another little man that looks just like me, acts just like me, just doesn't give a fuck like me, <laughs> walk, talk, and acts like me. He might be the next best thing, but not quite me. Because I'm big CC, as I'm the real CC. All you other CCs are just imitators, so won't the real CC please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Um... But anyways, I've gone on to reproduce, had gotten married, have a nice stable family. But yeah, John Doyle, who refuses to adapt and overcome to the changing environment of um, relationships and sexual um, and sexual reproductive natures, is not going to end up reproducing, or it's going to be a lot more difficult for him, and it could potentially not happen at all for him. So it's, It really makes you wonder why the only thing that they have in common besides these gender roles is human biology. Any honest preschool teacher or any honest parent can testify to the average differences between boys and girls. And in English, the word that we have to describe those who insist that there are no innate differences between the sexes is childless. This is your average feminist, of course, as we know. Wait, how many kids does this guy have? Does, this, does John Doyle have kids? I honestly don't know. Is this something we can Google? I feel I think this feels weird. Does John... Oops. Does John... Man, he's 22? No. Holy shit, he is? He's only 22? Damn. Wait, what is this? Wikia tube? Oh my god, do I have? No, I wouldn't have. There's no shot. There's no shot. I always love Googling myself. Oh, no dice. Whew, dead. We're not in the public sphere yet. Personal life. Yeah. John grew up Twitter. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna guess if he does, it's not on. Uh. Okay, I'm going to assume not. <laughs> okay, I'm going to run back. Listen to the music for a second.
Uh, but let's experiment. You know, suppose that you were a visitor to a previously unknown society. You discover another continent or something. Okay, I've discovered you gave it. the members of now that what? society a test requiring them to identify the gender of a random person from that society described by a series of adjectives. One is described as sentimental, submissive, superstitious, affectionate, dreamy, oh, sensitive, oh, oh. attractive. <laughs> He's... <laughs> Uh, he's almost like he's uh, he's almost countering his own opinion because realistically in that other society if they were to then bring you a man would you agree with him that that's a man because at that point if you were to describe the traits that were like that you would list towards a woman but you went to a previously uncontacted society and they brought you a man Holy fuck, it would throw his, his, his head would explode. His Pendant, mind would emotional, just melt. fearful, soft-hearted, and weak. The other is described as adventurous, <laughs> as dominant, weak. forceful, independent, strong, aggressive, autocratic, daring, enterprising, robust, stern, active, courageous, progressive, meaning continuing, rude, severe, unemotional, and wise. What is the likelihood that the members of that society will identify the former gender as male and the latter as female? Well, a cross-cultural study of gender stereotypes conducted by John Williams and Deborah Best suggests that the answer, is, the answer is virtually zero. Respondents in at least 23 of the 25 countries studied uh, associated each of the first set of adjectives, each individual one, not just all, cumulatively, um, with females and the second set with males. Moreover, since gender roles are inherently sexual in that that is what unites man and woman, insight into the truth of these can be found through what each sex is attracted to in See, the question is, my question to John Doyle is, why do you have men that can fill traditionally feminine roles in society? And why do you have women that can fill traditionally male roles in society? What is it that gives, like, the women this, this like, magical power? Um, and what is it that gives men this magical power to do this um, for some of these roles? Because that would be, that would be a curious question for him. It's like, okay, that's fine. But you have, you you must admit that we have um, women that can fill these roles and men that can fill these roles. So And a mate. If these roles Sorry, are socially conditioned, then it should make no difference, especially not throughout the world in cultures that don't have our level of Western enlightenment. But evolutionary psychologist David Buss studied mate preferences in 37 different cultures over five years, and he found that women's and men's ideal mates were stable and differed very little by culture. Whether women were from Iran or Vietnam or wherever else in the world, they valued material resource, social status, and ambition in men much more than physical appearance. And I bet you can guess what the men valued, which was them being young and physically attractive. Moreover, once the designers of the study knew what an anonymous... Once again, this isn't, this isn't really articulating that this is, um, like, that this is biological or some aspect, right? Especially in a very interconnected society, all this shit, like, it's, it's kind of expected that you would have cultures bleed over, right? Because what he said in his original statement was, like, we have an uncontracted tribe and we ask them, well, all these places that are studied have all been touched by everybody else's culture, right? Especially American culture. So if you have America that is like highly all about looks and shit, of course, you're going to have other countries um, that are going to be all over looks. And not only that, there are women that enjoy men for their looks, right? More so than they do for their... No, I would say that it's it's probably equal. There, there are women there that look for men. Um, with their looks but the resource part is a big thing too and honestly god i don't really enjoy i wouldn't enjoy dating a woman that was incapable of looking after herself whether it's fight like financially um or just like socially or um whether it be just like in general right like i'm not looking i'm not looking to be like a woman's fucking caretaker and i'm not looking for a fucking caretaker those aren't the relationships i want to engage in um but then again i guess i wouldn't really be <clears throat> stereotypical masculinity type stuff, person's so. preferences or ideals were in a mate they could predict the sex of that person with 92 percent accuracy sounds to me like no matter where you are women want confident providers and men want beautiful women that eight percent is still pretty big john like that eight percent is huge you're talking about eight percent that don't fit into the into those categories right and the question would be is that shit going to grow over time 
Sorry, I wonder why feminists are mad. So what is attractive in males and females is attractive because it implies how they will suit the role that we desire them for. Desirable traits in males imply the role of the provider and the protector, and desirable traits in women imply the role of the mother. If our society is to have a future, then it will require men and women to get together and have children. And if there are roles and behaviors yep, that we are biologically predisposed to pursue, then it Clock's is better to pursue away, them than to fight reality and just be miserable. So those like my opponent will have to explain why Western social constructs actually have a greater impact in syndication on the world and can explain this better than simple biology and why this has been the case for virtually all of human history. Why has there never been a matriarchal society? Were all the men throughout the world just sending letters back and forth with notes on how to oppress women? No, male leadership is rooted in biology. But despite our universal awareness of these traits, we're told that they are stereotypes, which is to say it's bad to recognize patterns Patterns. Despite this, stereotype accuracy is actually one of the most replicable effects discovered in social psychology. Sure, stereotypes may be bad if we're all taught that people on like Mars are a certain way, which causes us to think inaccurately of them, but men and women interact with each other constantly for their entire lives. And the idea that the average person would ignore uh, maybe a not lifetime so much in of your personal audience there, experience Jim just to subconsciously uphold some sort of unfounded myth just simply defies belief. Most studies of stereotype accuracy have shown them to be accurate generalizations relying on probability rather than category, meaning acknowledging the existence of tendencies can coexist with <coughs> acknowledging the existence of outliers. For example, there's an overwhelming empirical evidence uh, of sex, sex differences in temperament. In a review of sex difference research, psychologist Alice Eagley found that existing research refutes four commonly asserted claims about sex differences, that they are small, inconsistent from study to study, artifactual and inconsistent with stereotypes. Eagley notes that despite frequent repetition of such claims, it is not cultural stereotypes that have been shattered by contemporary psychological research, but rather the scientific consensus forged in the feminist movement in the 1970s. But maybe those differences do exist. What? but it's because of socialization and environmental conditioning. Okay, how can we test that? Presumably by looking at children, right? Since the period during which they would have been socialized into believing these things would be the shortest. Well, from a young age, boys are far more competitive than girls. Even in preschool, they engage in more competitive activities than girls. Moreover, a, stud a study of second through 12th graders revealed that girls reported stronger attitudes about cooperation. And we uh, a big thing too is like when you're raising a child, a lot of the shit that your child's going to be engaging in is like a direct reflection of the parent, right? So you need to look at, when you look at the child, you need to look at the parent, right? If, you have, if you're just looking at like, oh, here's a bunch of boys, they're super competitive. Look, boys want to be super competitive. Well, what happens if the parents are actually the super highly competitive ones and they're just raising their boys to be like that, but they're not raising their girls to be highly competitive, right? there's going to be issues with those studies, right? Or the way that we study this shit is, yes, it's going to be a lot on the kids and us looking at the kids, but at the same time, we also need to, we need to address, like look at the parents and basically what they're engaging in, so. Weaker attitudes about competition in all grades than did boys. Janet Lever's famous study of how children play reflects this as well. Young boys are far more likely to engage in games, meaning play where there is specific competitive goals, while girls are far more likely to engage in play, things without explicit goals or competition like hopscotch, jump rope, etc. And even that competition is actually indirect because it's through turn taking instead of, you know, more explicit in the moment competition like boys engage in. And of course, domination and leadership are forms of competition as well. Like, once again, though, if you have parents being like, no, you're not allowed to play hopscotch, that's very feminine, go play fucking football, right? And then you're like, oh, look, that boy's, like, super competitive. He's playing super competitive sports. And be like, yeah, because he was he was pushed there. But okay. Dominance behaviors are those intended to achieve or maintain a position of high relative status, to obtain power, influence, resources, all the things that women want, etc. And studies have shown that when children get together, even in preschool years, dominance hierarchies emerge spontaneously. Some children are far more influential and less subject to aggression by others. Boys engage in a significantly greater amount of dominance play related um, than girls do, such as playing with weapons, engaging in rough and tumble play, uh, and then also in mixed sex groups in nursery schools, boys end up disproportionately at the top of the classroom hierarchy. This is very important because mm. little boys and little girls are basically equal at that age physically. So if male dominance throughout world history is only due to this later developed strength, you'd expect there to be a delay in these behaviors, but there aren't. It's instinctual. Even among mixed group of 33-year-old toddlers, girls are far more likely to listen to instructions from boys than vice versa. 
male leadership is just natural. The historical record is perfectly clear. Men have generally achieved status through dominance of other men, and women have generally achieved status through their associations with high status men, sometimes even by competing with women for them. Not surprisingly, in same-sex pairings, a high dominance individual will assume a leadership position over a low dominance individual. However, when a high dominance woman is paired with a low dominance man, the man actually tends to assume the leadership role, but it's not because he asserted dominance over the woman, but rather because the woman selected him to be the leader. Conversely, females in all known societies exhibit more nurturing behavior than males both inside and outside of the family. Everywhere, it is women who are the primary caretakers of the young, the sick, and the old. Psychological studies tend to confirm that women are more empathetic than men, regardless of age or the measures used, which which is, of course, substantially correlated uh, with nurturing behavior. And females of all ages tend to be person-oriented, while males tend to be object-oriented. Uh, as early as their first year of life, even, girls pay more attention to people, and boys pay more attention to inanimate objects. When shown identical photographs, males have a greater tendency to report seeing objects, while females do with seeing different people. Differences in orientation affect the way that people perceive themselves. Women's self-identity and self-esteem tend, like, uh, tend to be centered around sensitivity with, like, and their biology. relations to others, while a man's self-concept tends to be centered around task performance, independence, dominance, all these things, things of that nature. Could be and one study showed that 50% of women, but only 15 Fuck, how long does he get to ramble? How long is he even rambling ideas already? When I can succeed at something that will also minutes? make other people Holy happy. Shit. This provides insight into the differences between male Good and female him. depression. Okay. And females, on average, outperform males on language skills oh. right out of the womb. They typically start speaking oh, earlier and throughout their face. Hey, to aggression for Holy shit. Holy shit, how long did he... 18 minutes? Holy shit. That's a fucking ramble, sir. Amazing. All right, well, first and foremost, thank you very much to Uncensored America for censoring this, or for censoring this event. <laughs> for sponsoring this event. No censorship here. Uh, one complaint, though, you guys did mess up with bringing me my soy milk, but it's okay. I'll, I, I can forgive you, but... uh. Yeah, so today the question again. is, should America return to traditional gender roles? Now, gender roles are a collection of behaviors that we expect men and women to adhere to in order to be the ideal man or woman. Although gender roles have changed and adapted throughout history, some roles have outlived others. This includes women being polite, accommodating, nurturing, and men being aggressive, stoic, and dominant. These are considered more traditional gender roles. And just to be clear, gender roles Holy by themselves are not always bad, but the enforcement of them almost always is. Who the fuck is Obviously, running the mic on that side? Enforced by law, Bro. but they are enforced socially. This includes stigma around Jeez. men who show their emotions and stay at home with the kids, and shaming women who enter the workforce Holy or prioritize fuck. career instead of starting a family. Traditionalists will often claim that women are naturally more nurturing and men are naturally protective providers. This is almost always followed by fantasizing about 1950s America, the supposed golden True. era, where the nuclear True. family was promoted, traditional gender roles were heavily encouraged, and women knew their place. It's true that the 1950s saw the highest rate of happiness among Americans yet. That is true. However, this wasn't due to traditional gender roles. In fact, something the traditionalists don't talk about very often is that although the nuclear family was heavily advertised, the 1950s actually saw traditional gender roles being challenged in many ways, particularly for women. After World War II, women made up a third of the workforce, entering the workforce at unprecedented rates during the war. Although traditional values were still heavily encouraged and women had fewer rights compared to men, many women challenged these roles and stayed content working jobs that were usually perceived as more masculine. Many traditionalists will also point to the 50s and 60s as an example of a time when marriage lasted and divorce was hardly an option. Again, it's true that... You know what, honest to God, I think a lot of it is. I think a lot of women easily shifted into more masculine roles. And men just ref either refused or so socially weren't allowed or still aren't allowed to transition into more like feminine roles. And I think that has left a lot of men feeling really lost because they don't know they don't know what's expected of them. I think and I think sometimes what's frustrating is when we go like 
a healthy feminine quality is getting the job done, looking after your family, nurturing. All those things should also be healthy masculine traits. I would say that most traits of when you think of like healthy masculinity or healthy femininity can literally be translated right on to um, the other, like the other gender almost immediately. Um, so it's just kind of, it's kind of weird to, to see. Pink maybe with that? I think pink. The 50s saw an all-time high when it came to marriage rates. But you have to ask yourself, at what cost? Because this time also included less autonomy for women, divorce was rare, but spousal abuse was common, with domestic abuse not even being considered a legal matter, but a family issue. That's right, domestic abuse was not a legal matter, law enforcement didn't even get involved most of the time, and domestic abuse wasn't formally criminalized nationally until 1994. Crazy. Now, thankfully, we've come a long way, and gender roles have certainly That's become nice. looser, but these traditional gender roles are still encouraged in many ways, particularly when it comes to the modern nuclear family. Women are still generally seen as the caretakers, and men are usually expected to be the breadwinner. This arrangement works well for millions of couples in America. I have no problem with a stay-at-home mom and a working father. The problem arises again when these roles are enforced by shaming those who deviate from these gender expectations. True. The father absolutely should provide for his family, but what is provision? And he should provision also be is not limited to financial provision. If a father is better equipped to stay at home with the kids and the mother is better suited to be the breadwinner, so why is this a problem? They should both be providing. Even if this kind of arrangement works better for some family units, stay-at-home dads still face shaming and stigma surrounding their masculinity. A 2013 Pew Research Center survey found that while 51% of Americans think a child is better off with a mother at home than in the workplace, only 8% say the child would be better off with a stay-at-home father. Oh, Furthermore, even if women are naturally better caretakers, the attempt at enforcing this role only results in negative outcomes. Research has actually shown that female caregivers experience greater role strain, which means that they face more pressure to conform to caregiving positions. I can see that. An analysis by Bowling Green State University found that female caregivers generally report having more negative experiences than male caregivers. And according to a 2012 Gallup poll of more than 60,000 states. Man, a big thing is, is people don't realize how hard it is to be a stay-at-home parent. I don't think somebody like I don't think somebody like John Doyle could do it. Honestly, don't. I don't think he'd be able to do it. I think he would. I think he would lose his mind with like stress and um, just just fatigue in general. I think I think it's a very demanding job of people. And I think like when you have people like John Doyle being like, it has to be enforced or it has to be pushed. You have to be this way. I would like to see those people engage outside um, of what they consider like those those gender roles to see if they're even capable of doing it because i think a lot of it is like projection that they're not capable of doing it so they're hoping that if they project other people to do it for them they can like live this like certain kind of lifestyle um that they are unable to facilitate otherwise because people don't want to engage in it so i don't know maybe that's maybe that's too much psych reading moms. into it they found these women were more likely to report anger mm -hmm. sadness and depression compared to their employed counterparts. Oh, for sure. Now, of course, if being a stay-at-home mom is what the woman wants, I would expect her to be happy in that role. But enforcing it via expectations and stigma Obviously. pushes people into boxes that they might not fit in. Even more so, the attempt to enforce traditional gender roles actually harms a huge goal of traditionalists, which is strong and healthy family units. In 2013, the University of Chicago uh, published a paper. Yeah, that that's actually a good point, because realistically, you shouldn't care how the family becomes healthy and happy. It's just that they do. That is a good point by uh, 4,000 married Hunter. couples in America. And it found that once a woman started to earn more than her husband, divorce rates increased. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, doesn't this prove then that men should be the primary earners? No. No, Men actually. need to check their fucking ego. It proves ego. that these rigid gender roles largely need to be done away with. The reason a female breadwinner increases the likelihood of divorce is largely because men feel emasculated for not living up to these arbitrary expectations mm. placed on men. 
The study also found that even when the woman earns more, she still does more housework as well. <laughs> the authors of the study said that a threatening wife will take on a greater share of housework so to comfort the husband's unease with the situation. <laughs> if the woman is successful and is able to learn or able to earn more, excuse me, this shouldn't cause end uh, this shouldn't cause unease. The end goal should be a happy, healthy, stable family unit. Even more so, according to a study published in Sage Journals, using data for married and cohabitating heterosexual couples in 29 countries from 2004 to 2014, their results provide robust evidence that male breadwinner norms are a key driver of the association between men's unemployment and risk of separation. An increase of one standard deviation in male breadwinner norms increases the odds of separation uh, with men's unemployment by 32%. Unfortunately, when we shame men for not being the breadwinner, it destabilizes marriages and hurts the end <laughs> and hurts goal them of overall. traditionalism. Because men feel pressure that they must be the breadwinner yep. in order to be the ideal man, job loss can lead to lower confidence and a higher likelihood that the marriage will end. Attempting to enforce gender roles hurts marriages in other ways as well. Studies have already suggest, or studies have already suggested that strict adherence to these rigid traditional gender roles. You're messing me up, Sean. Studies have already suggested that strict adherence to these rigid traditional gender roles can increase the likelihood that the man will act out in violence against his partner. But that's not all. A 2014 study assessed the effect... Imagine beating your wife because she makes more than you. Fucking cringe. Cringe. ...of masculine discrepancy stress, which is a form of distress arising from perceived failure to conform to socially prescribed masculine gender role <laughs> norms on intimate partner violence. Results indicated that masculine discrepancy stress significantly predicted men's historical perpetuation of intimate partner violence. Abuse of any kind is one of the leading causes of divorce. The more you shame men for failing to live up to your preferred gender roles, the more likely it is that, that man will harm his marriage and destroy, or excuse me, harm his partner and destroy his marriage. And none Damn. of that is very traditional. Gendered expectations that men should be stoic, viewing emotions as a sign of weakness, is, incredib uh, is incredibly detrimental to men's own mental well-being. There have been many times throughout history when crying was specifically perceived as masculine, but that's far from the case nowadays. Really? Unfortunately, this expectation uh, leads to repressive coping styles and an increased likelihood of suicide. Now, I'm not sure how you could live a traditional life or raise a traditional family if you're dead. Today Ooh, in the U.S., true. men are significantly Based. more likely to die by suicide than women. Perhaps by acknowledging how enforcing these roles on men negatively affects them, society can help to alleviate this devastating reality. If gender roles work in your own relationship, that's cool. But don't try and force these roles on others to appease your own desire for a traditional aesthetic. Marriage has been proven to lead to higher rates of happiness and a longer lifespan. If you value marriage, recognize how these gender roles can impact the family unit, and it's crucial for a happier future. In fact, according to research published by Brigham Young University, couples with an equal partnership report more stability in their marriage, less conflict, less dependency, and less resentment. True. True. I, I would say that me and, me and Sam, we have a pretty, a pretty equal marriage um in terms of like being able to make decisions i don't care if she makes more money like we don't really care as long as like money and bills are coming in that's all that matter <laughs> bills are coming <laughs> we want more bills give us more um more money's coming in and like things are getting paid that's all that really matters like it isn't like oh i have to be providing this level to her um and sure she has to be doing the, this level for me i don't really that doesn't really bother me or i'm not really concerned with it oh the fuck just texted wasn't a goddamn text message. Oh, it's podcasts. Who fucking cares? Who cares? So, um, yeah, I'd probably agree with this. And we don't we don't fight a whole ton. There's no real, there's no like major stressing in our in our relationship. So, that men should be the breadwinner, winner, and women is uh, naturally better off with the children can also have negative effects even on the children. How often have we heard people complain about how men rarely receive custody of the children? Mm. Maybe this is because we consistently reinforce this idea that the men women are, are just caretakers. always naturally the better caretakers. Yep. Again, the Which idea that you should be strong, case. caring, and provide for your family are good values to have, but they don't apply to men or women. 
These values should be universal, divorced from gender entirely, and decided upon based on whomever is better equipped for that role within the marriage. True so base. to summarize, enforcing gender roles can have devastating effects on marriages. It can contribute to higher rates of violence against women. It forces people to conform at the expense of their own well-being. It ignores the potentially caring fathers who deserve custody over their children. Base. And it contributes to higher rates Hell yeah. of Good suicide. Job, Time's none of, sorry, not John none of that Bad is job. traditional. Bad job. John Doyle. Good job, Hunter. All right. We're going to move on to our first segment. John Doyle was going to respond. (laughs) We're going to have a. What can I say? All white people look the same. My bad. Our first segment, where we'll be rotating from John Hunter each round five minutes, and then we'll do another round with Jeff five minutes for the crossfire. So, John, you have five minutes. Uh, well, the first thing I'd like to address is oh, sort of the overarching five minutes theme of rambling. Of Here we go, boys. There, Buckle in. This idea that gender roles may exist in whatever capacity they evolve over time, but they definitely shouldn't be enforced. I agree with this. No one's saying that gender roles should be enforced. But what's interesting is that while <laughs> they get back in the kitchen. over time, certain men in certain societies might dress a certain way, other men might cry before a, a knighting ceremony or something like that. Ultimately, the biological roots of how men and women behave are one-to-one all throughout history and all throughout different societies. Moreover, who is enforcing them? Where is, like, the, the gender role Stasi going door-to-door and being like, are you barefoot, naked, pregnant? Oh, fuck, he's so bad faith. I'm honest to God, I'm surprised Hunter even agreed to this debate, knowing how John Doyle is. I'm honest, I'm shocked, actually. That he would uh, that he would agree to this debate, but you know what? Fuck it, it's content. It in the kitchen or whatever. This is just simply not happening. In fact, it's actually being enforced in the opposite direction through, frankly, institutional soft power. I mean, look at where you see in the media. The messaging is always anti-traditional. It's always why women who, well, uh, frankly, white women. Why white women need to stop having kids? Why white people need to have stop having oh, kids right now? Oh, he picks bad faith. Picks the worst fucking shit. He did also make an interesting point there that I think is true. Uh, which is that remember how we talked about yesterday when when people have like you could you could have something go on and one like even if one person posts even if it's the minority of people posting like one bad comment or one bad criticism of you or is like super vitriolic how they come across it'll paint everything everything you see through that lens because you're just your prime oh no i just colored into the mountain oh no fuck um this is the same shit I can't believe how women have choices. True. We need to take away all their choices. Be like, McDonald's or Arby's? Whoop, no choice. Sorry. Rip. Whoa, I almost painted in that one. Now we're going to paint a little bit more here and color into this one. Make it look like it's... Make it look like it's snow. There. Makes it look like it's ice. It is more difficult now to get married. This isn't necessarily because tradition in itself has failed, but because Two of more things holes like economic fill, structures, uh, offshoring a manufacturing base. It is true that what we had in the 1950s. Man, it's looking banging, though. Look at that fucking thing. That's fucking based. That's probably my favorite picture so far. It's actually it's fucking balling. But I don't know how to... I don't know what to finish. I'd like to finish the two... The two side pieces off is like maybe space. But I don't know what these two is not what we have now and that is a problem so this is sort of an abstract discussion um, in that regard another thing that he mentioned there was less autonomy for women I would be curious to see how that's defined what does that even mean like yeah if you are legally enshrined via some document that you are married to this man sure there's going to be a little bit of limitations on that behavior but I would be curious to see why that's inherently bad also domestic abuse careful who defines that I mean there is often a lot of embellishment who really defines beating your wife? That goes on in these cases. Obviously, no one here is for domestic abuse, uh, but I would be curious to see what that would act- was actually looking like back then because you can look at it from what was legally allowed and what was legally not allowed. But in terms of the actual incident... Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's go. Hang on. Let's take a quick, let's take a quick tangent, chat. What's illegal abuse? During the 1950s, there were no laws to protect battered women, and assaults on women were not considered as crime. Oh, uh, yikes. 
It is hard to believe that women only 60 years ago were still viewed and inferior to inferior to males and had little no rights to protect themselves. When men returned from World War II, some men resulted to domestically violate as a way of punishing their wife for something she did and to affirm dominance that, previous, they, that he previously lost. Assaults were inflicted on women during the 1950s were seen as a part of male aggression as something that is normal. Women who did report crimes were viewed as being the actual perpetrators and the assault was actually their fault because they were unable to defend themselves? No way. I want to go read up more on that. Shit, that's wild. Domestic abuse during the 1950s was not considered a crime, but as a family matter, and law enforcement would not get involved. Damn. Since women were unable to defend themselves from abuse and assaults during the 1950s, the excuse that it was the woman's fault was an excuse that was popularly used. <laughs> During the 1950s, there was no laws to protect battered women, and assaults on women were not considered a crime. Door 2008 explained that during a study that when women who were sexually assaulted by neither... Who were assaulted that neither the boy or the investigators deemed the assault as rape, even though it would now be considered rape. Oh, shit, that's crazy. Back in the laws, and law enforcement did not see it as the man victimizing the woman. Only extreme cases went to courts, and all others were seen as norm. Similarly, domestic abuse was considered a private matter, so police and courts did not get involved. What the fuck? This is the better help. Content warning. CW, CW, guys. Domestic violence is not a new phenomenon. Unfortunately, violence in the families and households, especially directed towards women and children, existed since the beginning of recorded history. Still more troubling is the fact that laws throughout the history have been ignored or even supported this kind of violence. In fact, it was seen as justifiable punishment by the abuser to keep their women and children under control. Yikes. Domestic violence, also called intimate partner violence, involves the physical, sexual, financial, emotional abuse of one person by another in order to intimidate, humiliate, or frighten and therefore maintain power and control. In modern times, we've become far less tolerant of domestic violence in our laws as well as our attitudes. However, as a society, we are burdened by the hundreds of years of negative precedents. Some culture and belief systems in contemporary American culture still harbor troubling attitudes about family relations and domestic violence. Even more alarming are the statistics. <laughs> it probably did. <laughs> Honestly, I would have to go look, but you're, I, I would not be shocked, especially for America. America. The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence reports that one in three women and one in four men have been victims of violence. That's crazy. That's super high. Holy shit. That's bonkers. <clears throat> On average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner. Damn. During one year, that's more than 10 million women, men and women. Holy shit. No shot. That's wild. One in four women, one in nine men have ex experienced severe intimate partner physical violence. Intimate partner contact, sexual violence, or intimate partner stalking impacts such as injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress. One in three women and one in four men have experienced some form of physical violence by an intimate partner. This includes a range of behaviors, slapping, shoving, pushing, and the case might not be considered domestic, and in some cases might not be considered domestic violence. One in seven and one in 25, one in seven women and one in 25 men have been injured by an intimate partner. One in 10 women have been raped. Data is unavailable for male victims. That's not good. We actually talked about this on our last article read, um, about how like men's sexual assaults just aren't taken seriously. One in four women and one in four men have been victims of severe physical violence. Damn. Man, one in four, one in seven, beating, burning, strangling? Holy fuck. One in seven women and one in 18 men have been stalked by an intimate partner. During their lifetime, the point in which they felt fearful or believed they someone close to them would be harmed or killed. Um, I wonder... I'll see, because they go to the point in which... They felt very feel for it, fearful or believed. I wonder if you asked them just how, how often have you been stalked? I wonder how close that number would be. Um, 
because I wonder I wonder if there's like a lot of men that have been stalked, but they're like, eh, it wasn't really fearful. I didn't think she was going to do anything. Um, I didn't think anybody was going to die, but she did stalk me. I'd be curious to see what like the safety exit. What the fuck is that? When I click that, will it just like GTFO? Hang on. Oh, it does too. It just literally... Oh, shit. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so you can, like, if you're, like, partners walking up, you can just click it. Oh, that's fucking wild. Good for them. That's actually pretty smart. On a typical day, there are more than 20,000 phone calls placed to domestic violence hotlines. Holy shit. And the presence of a gun in domestic violence increases the risk of homicide by 500%. Intimate partner violence accounts for 15% of all violent crime. Women between the ages of 18 to 24 are most commonly abused by an intimate partner. 19% of domestic violence involves a weapon. Domestic violence is correlated with higher rates of depression and suicidal behavior. Yeah, no shit. Only 34% of people who are injured or my intimate partners receive medical care. Only 34%? Holy fuck, that's super low. So what does that mean? That means... 66% aren't receiving medical care? Damn. That's wild. That's a lot of fucking people. One in five women and one in 77, 71 men. Now, I'd be curious about this one because I would be curious on how many men don't report being sexually assaulted or sexually, like, violated. Damn. Look at this fucking thing. Damn, that's a lot of, that's a lot of fucking reading. Who's the highest? Alabama. Nope, never mind. Oh, why wouldn't you do why wouldn't you do top to bottom? What is the biggest one here so far? I saw 24. 25 Michigan. Oh, that's way oh okay. Damn, a million. Estimated number of victims, a million in Michigan. <laughs> New York, 1.3 million. Damn, Texas, 1.9. Oh, 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 California, 2. 2 mil? Damn. Holy shit. Sexual violence other than rape, 53 million a year? This is it for 2010? Is this for a year? Holy shit. Estimated, not reported. Okay. Damn, that's fucking... That's wild. 1 in 15 children are exposed to intimate part of violence each year. 90% of these children are eyewitness to this violence. Damn. That's fucking bonkers. This is how they're occurring. You often hear this leftist trope of like, oh, women in the 50s were getting abused. And it's like, oh, okay. Hey, Grandma, is that true? Oh, no, sweetie. That's not... It's just like all this... <laughs> that's who i call up i call grandma and be like hey grandma did grandpa beat you back in the day and she's like no not at all fuck that i know my grandfather probably definitely abused my grandmother manufactured historical revisionism also the decline in marriage through the 50s it is true that the 50s were kind of the peak but the decline began much further than that right i mean through things like no fault divorce normalization of the sexual revolution things like that that's why marriage has declined and it oh, is good yeah. and it does make people happier Oh yeah, so the women the women's got the sexual freedom and then it was all it was all downhill for the men's. True. Fucking true, John Doyle. And actually you can look at studies that have surveyed fifteen hundred uh, couples or another one's uh, <laughs> surveyed forty thousand people and they find that couples in more traditional marriages read less egalitarian marriages are actually happier and stay together longer. Um Ooh, actually I wonder, hang on. Let's let's take a look one second, because I wanna When did the first Oh, 1933. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, but that was... Oh, no. Do you want to know where it... You want to know where 
where it was. The first law, according to Piper, was passed in 1933. Not long after the Nazis rose to power. <laughs> I don't know if that's... Now, that's just might be... That just might be Germany was doing it. Um, also passed laws to protect animals. Matthew Piper uh, recently graduated U of G with a Master's of History, became intrigued by the apparent contradictions and made them the focus of his thesis. He successfully de defended in January. Good for him. The first law, according to Piper, was passed in 1933, not long after the Nazis rose to power. Under the Animal Protection Act, it was forbidden to mistreat and handle animals in a way that would harm them. Holy fuck. Well, if that just doesn't fucking blow your mind. <laughs> oh! Hang on. Hang on, boys. Hang on. We got the history of animal protection. Hang on. We're getting... Ooh. Ooh. We're getting some shit back in the 1600s. Hang on. Animal protection entered the American colonial record in December of 1641. When the Massachusetts General Court enacted its comprehensive legal code, the Body of Liberty, section 92 to 93, prohibited any tyranny or cruelty towards any brutality creature, which was, which are useless, what? Useless kept for man's use and mandated periodic rest and refreshment for any cattle being driven or led. Damn. Animals had fucking, oh shit. Transnational Protestant revis revivalism and social reform in the early 19th century fueled the expansion of animal protections in great britain evangelicals and abolitionists spearheaded the earliest animal protection laws 1822 and organized societies 1824 which became a blueprint for the dozens of new anti cruelty laws in america social reformers and ministers became attentive to the statue of animals during the second great awakening 1790 to 1840 Embracing the new theology for free moral agency and human perfect ability. Anim American ministers such as Charles Ganderson Finley included animal mercy in the... Oh, I don't know what the fuck that word is. We're Googling that. What is that? Exegesis. Exegesis. Okay. Uh, on the upright Christian conduct, new transportation network communities. <laughs> That's crazy. In, in 1870, SPCAs and anti cruelty laws modeled after Bergen's work in New York existed in most states. Yeah, so animals had way more rights. <laughs> Yikes. Than fucking animals. In terms or of sorry, women, women had less rights than animals. Animals had more rights. More That's wild. To divorce. Uh, well, if you look at who's initiating the divorce, it's like 80% women. So I don't think it's exactly the man just being emasculated. I think it's more of what maybe the uh, more incel types in the crowd would recognize as hypergamy. Women, regardless of their income. Could it, like, when they're like, oh, women just initiate more divorces. Yeah, it's because they're unsatisfied with how the men are acting. It means the men are acting like garbage and they want out of those fucking relationships. Like, they use this as like, oh, look at these women. They just want out of these relationships. Yeah. Why the fuck do they want out of them, John Doyle? Why the fuck do you think they don't want to be there? Do you think it's because they're having a good time and they feel happy in that relationship and they feel like their needs are being met? Or is it because the men in that relationship are just absolute fucking dog shit and, they, and the women realize they can do fucking way better for some of these men? want men who earn more than they do all across the world all throughout time they are attracted to resource and status i mean this is just the way that these things go um in terms of why do they still do housework it's not because they're trying to coddle their stupid husband it's if you look at the way that men and women solve problems men solve problems by looking at it and reducing it to its most competential forms and kind of solving it from there women tend to be much more meticulous for those of us married you might recall a situation where you were assigned to do a chore <laughs> and you did it because you're not like this character <coughs> The man, you did it and your wife comes by and she's like no you, let me do it you didn't do it right that's just the way so <laughs> so what you're saying john doyle is men men are shitty at the task given to them if there's not like this like um financial incentive attached to them which might be true i can i can totally get behind that i've been been there but that's a that's a condemnation of the men. That's not a that's not a excuse. You're like, imagine being like, oh yeah, my wife gave me a task. I did it really shittily, and then she she came along and she was gonna do it for me. So why even bother doing it? I understand the sentiment, but at the same time, like, um, if you're doing a shitty job of it, and the wife has to come fix it, that's on you, bro. That's not on that's not on your wife. That's on you doing a shitty job. But 
that's okay. I guess you can internalize that as like that's the woman's, that's the woman's issue for having standards. I guess that's it's a fucking weird position to take. I'm not gonna lie, but all the power to you, brother. Yeah, let's get our Uranus on. Way that these things go. So yeah, they're still doing the housework, but I don't think it's because they're like trying to help out their like poor husband. I'd be curious to see the sort of psycho uh, analysis on this too. Is Hunter a stay-at-home dad? Is he insecure in that role? Who knows? But. Maybe you just feel like you failed as a man. Well, maybe that is what it is. You failed as a man. There's something going on within you that feels like you failed to provide. Maybe that's not socially constructed. Maybe that's just a reality. Like, it's not like this situation where, oh, I feel like I should be LARPing the 1950s, but I can't afford a Bel Air. What? I'm just distraught. Maybe it's like the most fundamental components of who you are as a man is actually being challenged by your inability to provide. I think that's very important to consider. Also, why is it bad? Why is it bad that you know men might be earning more, women might be earning less? I fail to see how that's bad. And of course, he did neglect to address all of the biological components that I was certain to mention in my introduction. Very important stuff. Um, he also brought up the suicide rates, male suicide because of these harmful gender stereotypes. When they were at their peak in the 1950s, let's say, you know, what are you, some kind of fairy? Kids weren't killing themselves at the rate they are now. Men weren't killing themselves at the rate they are now. So when yeah, they could, were the they could just take out all their anger and aggression on their wives. You're fucking right. God damn. God damn, John Doyle. You're fucking so smart. We should just, we should just start beating our wives again. Good job. Fuck, instead of killing yourself, you just beat your wife. You'll feel so much happier. God, this guy's got, he's got fucking big brains. Most strict, the suicide rates and the depression rates in both genders. Were Where's my orange? Now, so there it is. I see it. That computes. Um, equal partnership is another thing he brought up. I would be curious to see how they define that. A lot of married couples I know who are more traditional consider themselves equal in the sense that the man provides, the woman takes care of the other things. Um, and, you know, with the divorce court thing, I think it's also fair to say uh, they tend to frame men as... They take care of the other thing? Like you mean, you mean the family? Like liberal judge is like, oh, the women are just so good at nurturing. It's going to be like, men are evil. So, yes. Okay. Seems like you're projecting a little bit there, John Doyle, but that's Some okay. of this is from John, your opening here. So um, you seem to be really set on this biological difference here. And uh, I, I don't know if maybe some other blue-haired lefties have like a weirder position, but obviously biology is real. Yes, of course. And uh, you even talk about how men and women have brain differences. And uh, even some of that is true. However, I think you left out something very important, which is that brains are malleable. They are like plastic. You can talk to scientists about this. And so social Rose, uh, talk to uh, a scientist, norms, Hunter? What is wrong with you? Have the potential Pink, to we'll change yellow, how your brain we'll operates. Yellow, we'll so that green. could also play a role in why you see differences in male and female brains. But again, biology is real. I'm not denying that. Again, the problem comes when you are trying to enforce these gender roles on other people. And I don't know why you would say you're not trying to enforce them when you are literally advocating to bring America back to traditional gender roles. I don't know how you do that unless you're planning on enforcing it to a degree. And then you even go further and say, well, who's enforcing them? And then you it's proceed like you. to try and get a diss at me for possibly being a stay-at-home dad. John, you're the one doing it, buddy. You're the one going door to door, making sure that the women are pregnant and naked in the kitchen. Based, not based. And the you talk about you no-fault divorce. That's another one I hear a lot about. Um, I think people fail to understand that no-fault divorce <laughs> largely means that you don't need to prove to a divorce court why you are getting a divorce, which, let's be real, how does somebody <coughs> prove that they're being emotionally abused? How does somebody prove that? That cannot always be proven in a court. So no-fault divorce, it goes both ways. I don't know really what relevance that has. You bring up the study about how women seem to be happier or they report happier marriages when they have more traditional gender roles. Now, the study you're talking about actually classified that as benevolent sexism. And what that means is that the man uh, tend to treat the women as uh, he, he would adore her and he would be more protective of her. Again, nothing really wrong with that. I don't even know why they would call it benevolent sexism, to be honest. However, if you look at the actual study, you'll see the reason that they were happier, the reason men and women were happier, at least, were different. Women specifically were happier because since the man was giving her more adoration and acting more protective, she actually perceived the marriage as being more egalitarian, and that was more, the reason why she more. was happier. You can read okay. the study. I would dare any of you to do that. Now, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, Gross. Read a study, Hunter? God, it's cringe. You talk about how things have gotten worse now. You bring up broken homes. Again, I've already explained how enforcing traditional gender roles 
can actually contribute to broken homes, so I don't know why you would want to keep doing that if you care about broken homes. You talk about widespread despair. That is true. People are becoming less happy. Again, you can't just point to people being unhappy and then just attribute it to any issue you want. The reason why people oh, are less that's happy nowadays wrong, is that's because exactly what we uh, can do. economic differences, and more specifically, people have less friends. People are not friends with their neighbors the same way that they used to be. That is and true. And as funny as that might sound, that is a large reason as to why the happiness rates are decreasing here in America. You also talk about the increase of narcissism. Again, you can look and see why. It's largely because of social media use. That brings out narcissism and has even been shown to have a correlation with uh, narcissistic behavior. So to just point to a time where people are unhappy and then attribute it to anything, I mean, that's not fair. I could say, well, a lot of people right now are unhappy, and John, you have a lot of subscribers, so clearly you're the reason why everybody's unhappy, you know? True. Like, that's, Ace. everybody I think can recognize that that's not a very reasonable or logical way no, to, I, I uh, agree to, with to assess that's these totally issues. Logical. We're good. And then, last but not we least, you it. talk about gender roles being a social construct. Again, biology can exist, gender roles, as far as the expectations that we expect from certain people, those can be, and largely are, socially constructed. There's a reason why biology, or excuse me, gender roles have changed. And Doyle, you point to a lot of uh, uh, similarities between history and how there were some similarities there, but I feel like you've also left out some major differences. For example, this is a pretty funny one, but small penises used to be a sign of masculinity. There's a reason why these ancient statues all depict men with my mic died? Okay. Depict men with these tiny little penises. And it's because at the time, having a large penis was seen as barbaric and ridiculous and the antithesis of masculinity. So little, I think that it's really important to dig pecker. into the nitty gritty there, the nuance. Uh, I didn't get to hit on yeah. everything, but I feel like I was able to address some of the main points you made there. John, Wait, you that have five was minutes? That was less than five minutes. He, John Doyle, fucking rambled forever. What the fuck, Hunter? You should have should have kept rambling, buddy. To respond? No problem. Um. So he acknowledged correctly that biology is real, real. Uh, neuroplasticity is also something that is real. If you're familiar with the dissertation, you know that the effects of this are real. The thing is, though, neuroplasticity, socialization, whatever you'd like to call it, you can best isolate with babies and with young children, like we did so conveniently in my introduction. And if that were the case, that neuroplasticity, you know, little brains can be molded, you'd expect to see, like, maybe 50-50, 40, 60 in terms of like where the babies are landing on the gender role spectrum. No, you, oh my lord. To do a study like that, would you would have to remove the, the child from every, you'd basically have to raise the child in an environment that has nothing to do with any other part of society. Because there's going to be like, you can't just look at a baby and go, aha, this baby clearly, clearly is defining masculine roles even though you know therefore it must be this when you have so many factors like it's not even just the baby because the baby like oh, fuck. <sighs> a lot of old parenting styles in my opinion were based on the premise that some the child was doing something wrong and it wasn't the parents doing something wrong so a lot of old parenting styles sought to correct the actions of the child while not addressing anything the adults were doing um, to that child to make that child that way, right? Like when we see when we see like an over aggressive child, we don't immediately blame the parents. We go, oh, that child is misbehaving. That child is in the wrong, right? Which is right for the for the for the initial kind of investigation. But when we when we dive into it more, we have to wonder. Well, hang on. How did the child get that way? Why is that child so aggressive? Is that, is that aggressiveness based off just that child existing? Or is that aggressiveness based off of something that has been learned or taught through the way that the, the parents and the other adults in that child's life are interacting with them? And it feels like in a lot of ways John Doyle's thing is like you have these babies and they're, they're just spawned out of the fucking mother already having all these gender roles hardwired built into them and that's why he keeps bringing up these studies instead of like really wrestling with the idea that it's it's how the parents are raising these kids 
um, the so like the socialization and the and the nurturing and the and all the little things because there are certain things that your child might be more disposition towards based off of like your personality style or what you have right certain other traits might come out but when you hardcore focus on those traits as a parent they're going to be the things that like shine the most out of your kid so it's just it's very weird it's one to one it's 100 percent of the time also in terms of how enforcing it are we really supposed to believe that hunter avalon gives a damn what i think about anything that me making a little quip about a stay-at-home dad is somehow making stay-at-home dads insecure in the role absolutely not but in terms of how it's being enforced, it's not so much enforcing it, it's simply removing the barriers. It is simply removing the propaganda that is telling young men and young women that the best thing they can do is pursue a career and not get married and hook up culture. And women wanting children is like outdated and cringe and it's actually empowering to be a sentient fleshlight. That type of influence does get in people's brains. And so you can actually poll young people and what you'll find is that many of them still report wanting to get married and wanting to have kids. Uh, believing that you know males and females are completely equal in the sense that they are the same but then they'll also say well uh, you know of course I'm a fan of course I believe these things so they are much less likely to want to say things that are socially un realistically I'm sorry but the people that want women to be basically sentient fleshlights isn't so much lefties as it is like people like John Doyle because realistically all he's saying that he wants is somebody that he can fuck and is going to do all the chores around the house for him. That's literally unironically what he is telling people that he wants. So if anybody's looking for the human fleshlight, it's fucking John Doyle. Acceptable, but they still believe in their brains that they want to pursue things that would be regarded as more traditional. Also, benevolent sexism call it what you want like yeah that sounds like pretty good to me i don't know it's like oh well you're saying that the males and the females in the relationship were happy well they were happy for different reasons because they're men and women yes obviously and also like well the woman actually she's getting one up on you because she perceives it differently she thinks it's actually equal who cares let her think what she wants you know like okay do your thing that's fine it doesn't really matter it doesn't have an effect on the relationship everybody's happy everything's fine he is correct about the less friends uh the relationships in general being in decline it is true this is symptomatic of industrial society of technology of things like that and of course these are problems and they have caused you know relationships to degrade I am simply trying to remove the influence of the people who are purposefully trying from the top down to psy up young men and women into pursuing a life of hedonism as opposed to a life that is and there we go the back to the religious argument in terms of suicide depression, back to the like religious that, argument as mentioned in my intro males and females experience depression much differently men are more likely to feel depressed if they feel like they have failed in their role Females are more likely to feel depressed if they sort of are off put by the environment. Why are they feeling that? Why are they feeling that depressive nature if they're failing in their role, John? Why would they feel that way if society isn't shaming them? John. John, you're so close to the answer, John. Johnny. Johnny boy. Jonathan, can I call you Jono? You're so close to being like, oh, why are they feeling this way? Why are they feeling like they failed? It's because people are pressuring them to be in those roles. Johnny. That's why. That's why they feel this like intense pressure to be in these to be in these fucking roles. Real. You can also see this in their suicide rates, for example. Men are more likely to successfully commit suicide. Women are more likely to sec uh, successfully attempt suicide. I'm sure we can see the picture. A male is in a position yes, and men he's are like, just better at yeah, suicide. there's no way Thank out of you. this. Shotgun to the head. A woman might be having an emotional episode and you know, just kind of does something and goes to the hospital. Everything's fine. I'm sorry, but this is just the case. So in terms of like what we expect from our partners being socially constructed, it's the same throughout cultures. Every single culture wanted the status, wanted the youth, wanted the beautiful young woman. That is the same. In terms of the little differences, oh, you know, this guy wanted his man, this man, it's like, okay, find me a big difference. Find me a culture that was like, actually, women are running the show. Actually, women are exclusively the providers, exclusively not the nurturers. There's literally not one society that does this. Also, the small penis thing, Look, we've all been in high school, we've all doodled or whatever. Men just, you know, that's what we do. We plant the flag. And I think that it's probably more likely that the artists who were sculpting those sculptures knew that if they made a more accurate depiction of the male appendage, that would be all that people looked at. So I think it's actually yes. historic. How the fuck? <laughs> I'm actually curious. Let's go, let's go, let's go count. Let's go check these facts. Let's check why the statue's got small peepees. And why it's bugging John Doyle that we talk about small peepees. -pee. 
why ancient Greek statues have small peepees. Okay. <laughs> yeah, make sure we're not up. Uh, ancient Greeks famously fetishized the male body in sculptures that represent powerful, illustrious men as hulking figures with taunt, rippling muscles. Sometimes these figures appeared partially clothed or draped in cloth. Often they were stark naked. To the contemporary eye, their, body, their bodies are ideal, except for one ahem, seminal detail. They have small to very small penises compared to the average of humanity. Uh, art historian Andrew Lear, a specific, a specialist in ancient Greek art and sexuality, says, and they're usually flaccid. Countless contemporary art lovers and historians have also been struck by the modest nature of the phallus feature in classical sculptures of gods, emperors, and other elite men from Zeus to celebrated athletes. The small members seem at odds with the massive bodies and mythically large personalities um, they accompany. But the ancient Greeks had the reasons for this aesthetical choice. Rewind to the ancient Greek world of around 400 BC and you'll find that the large erect penises were not considered desirable, nor were they a sign of power or great strength. In his play, The Clouds, circa 419 to 423 BC, ancient Greek playwright Arist Aristophanes, Arist Aristophanes, I don't know, summed up the idea traits of his male peers as a gleaming chest, bright skin, broad shoulders, tiny tongue, strong buttocks, and a little prick. Historian Paul Crystal has also conducted research into the ancient ideal. The small penis was was constant with Greek ideals of male beauty. He writes in the book Bed with Ancient Greeks, 2016. It was a badge of the highest culture and paragon of civilization. In ancient Greek art, most of the great man's features were represented as ample, firm, and shiny. So why weren't the same aesthetic principles applied to the penis? As Lear and other historians suggest, part of the answer lies in with how the phalluses of less admirer men, less admirable men, were portrayed. <laughs> They're portrayed as huge. <laughs> Lustful, depraved satyrs, in particular, were rendered with very large erect genitals, sometimes almost as tall as their torso, based. According to mythology, these creatures were part man, part animal, and totally lacked restraint. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I see. So, like, the idea of a big penis is basically you are the sexual deviant. You're out there. You're constantly erect. You're constantly looking for sex. You're constantly looking to you as other people. It's, like, more of the selfish take, whereas the small penis, he was, he was very strong, very stoic. He could present himself as being strong. And, like, one of the biggest, thing, one of the biggest things about being strong and being, um, you know, masculine is your ability to, in a lot of ways, curb yourself or curb your desires. Right? Okay. I can see it. Big penises were vulgar from the outside of the culture norm, sometimes sported by barbarians of the world, writes Crystal. Indeed, across many ample pots and frenzy, well-endowed satyrs can be seen drinking, pleasuring themselves with abandon. In Greek comedy, fools were routinely sported large genitals, a sign of stupidity, more of a beast than a man, according to Crystal, who did so, who so too did our artistic representation of Egyptians, say Lear, who were longtime enemies of the Greeks. Okay. Interesting. Uh, in this way, satyr fools, foes served as foils to male gods and heroes who were honored to their self-control and intelligence, along with honored qualities requiring restraint like loyalty and, pr and prudence. If large phalluses represented gluttonous appetites, then the conclusion could be drawn that the small flaccid penis represented self-control. Uh, historically accurate to say that the reason they did that was to distract, uh, or sorry, to remove the distraction from the nope. appendage and focus more on the beauty of... Nope. Oh my god, so wrong. Classic John Doyle L. Classic John Doyle L. Can I? No, I can't. Fuck. I have to, like, check your messages sometimes. I wonder if I can... Can I lower? I gotta fuck around with... with uh... Oh, you can add stream markers. Oh, that's cool. I need to fuck around with moderation to allow swears the to get through. The rest of the statue. And also, I would urge you, my new friend, I don't think that arguing that having a small penis is actually very masculine is going to give you the look that you would like it to. Oh, see? Oh, see? Doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. Oh, bruh. Ten seconds of reading. Ten seconds of reading would have saved you so much egg on your face. Rip. You have five minutes, Hunter. Is this work? Okay, okay. First of all, I was arguing the small penis thing on your behalf, actually. So you know. Oh. But no, all kidding aside. Um, 
y- oh, you're just wrong about the toxic the masculinity. Thing. Let's okay, go. We should focus on that a little bit more. But <laughs> no, but seriously, these. First of all, I'm not arguing that having a small penis nowadays is masculine. I'm He's arguing. Still fixated that, on it. <laughs> come on, we're all adults here, guys. Let's go. I'm arguing that at one point that was considered masculine. And no, it wasn't just because they were worried that people wouldn't pay attention to the other sculpture. You can read about this from historians. Ancient Greece specifically sculpted men with small penises because that was co- considered the, uh, um, the, the highest degree of what they would consider then male beauty. You ask for an example of when women ran the show. Again, I think that you're a little confused here. Biology is real. For a long, long time, men have ran the show, and that is largely because they have testosterone. They are stronger, yes. When, there, when we were back in the cavemen days, or the days in which you needed to be out doing physical yeah, labor see, and this is this, I think, then uh, yes, men were obviously most women have adapted, but I don't think they most have men have been able to change. Again, I am not denying that there are biological differences between males and females. What I'm saying is that just because at one point men... And I think a lot of it has to do with upbringing. I think my son is going to be very well adapted for like new generations of like dealing with people and being able to be by himself and like he'll starve off i think a lot of the loneliness that other men feel um because he'll find like meaning and like purpose by himself and like um being able to enjoy a lot of things that don't require like these hardcore like there's no real expectations with him in life it's kind of like be yourself um just live a good basically live a good life um there's nobody like expecting like a ton out of him or shit like that and i think that's probably like the healthiest way to be. Where the providers due to testosterone does not mean that nowadays, since testosterone is not nearly as important for providing, considering a lot of labor jobs have significantly decreased, that shouldn't be an expectation that we force on men or stigmatize them if they just don't adhere to that. You also bring up the baby boys. Baby boys are more emotionally reactive than baby girls. I don't know if you're aware of that, John, but that is a fact of the no, matter. John's never had to actually deal with react kids, so to why more would emotion. They express more emotion, but it's once they get older that that starts to decrease. And they've done studies with communication styles of mothers, and they found that the mother would be very receptive and cool and chill when the daughter was being very emotionally expressive, but not so much with the boys. And it's not surprising that by the time they were six years old, boys had less emotional intelligence. A lot of that is, again, because of socialization. Mm. You ask why I care what your opinion is. You say, do I honestly think that uh, anybody is going to, or, or why I would care about what you say. But then you go on to say that hookup culture gets in people's brains. If hookup culture and these other ideals can subconsciously get in people's minds, I don't know why your ideas couldn't, unless you're really willing to bite that bullet. I guess you're really just that insignificant if you want to that <laughs> Nobody, way. Nobody's but receptive again, to John Doyle's a ideas lot of these based. Issues can be attributed to Let's go. expectation. It's not that there are no differences between males and females. It's that expecting males and females to act a certain way solely because they might be biologically predisposed to this behavior does more harm than good. It destroys families. It negatively impacts children. It negatively impacts men. Let's see. Let me go th- over one more here. Even further, when you talk about um, how we should kind of go the direction of our biology, we're not a slave to biology. Not at all. Part of the reason that humans have become so advanced is because we're we recognize our biology. biological Fuck, urges we got one more hole to fill, boys. that are Look not at this always fucking drawing. Right. That's Fuck how yeah, humans got to where they are today. Even more so, again, bawling. if a woman wants to be a caregiver or wants to be more nurturing with the family, that is by all means A-OK with me. But when you force it, why is it that women report more negative feelings when they are in these roles? Why is it that women report more depression when they are stay-at-home moms? This doesn't mean being a stay-at-home mom is bad. It doesn't mean it's bad for women to be nurturing. It means that it's more likely to result in negative outcomes when you try and enforce it on people. So I say, let's be real Americans and just let people live their lives freely so long as it's not hurting other people. Ugh, they're just looping at this Cope. point. John. <laughs> Ready? Okay. John's just going to – okay. Is, it, are they, is he going another five minutes to – another five minutes to rebut because if he gets another five minutes to rebut i guarantee you john's just gonna fucking loop and i'm gonna lose so much interest and then i'm just gonna leave because right. you guys will have a 15 minute crossfire you can okay, go at Jesus, it thank you want just 15 minutes free for all christ let's go
Turn off their mics. Are you a little bit concerned that a lot of the evidence suggests that when you try to enforce these ideals, it results in negative outcomes? Do you feel like you're worsening the outcomes for a lot of people for the sake of an aesthetic of traditionalism? No, no, it's not about, look, I understand my intro is actually sort of self-referential in this regard, like the 1950s Face. thing. That's sort of a parody what? insofar as a lot a parody. Of more progressive parody for types what? tend to associate my beliefs with like this, you know, fetishizing of the Fuck, 1950s. What are we, what are we That's not really my belief, with? so it is sort of a parody. Wait, um, your opening wasn't your belief? I'm not, I'm not actually Are you walking a, back on your opening or? <laughs> I'm not actually <laughs> thinking that we're going to go back to the 1950s or something like that. I simply want stable marriages and stable families. Um, so do if I. If you don't mind, I have a couple things I wanted to address here and then maybe we can get it back and Forth going. Well, hold on, we're still in um, the back and forth right now. Wait, why would you point to why would you aw, why would you point then to the 1950s as your model if you don't want to go back to that? Why would you? Why aren't you then suggesting things like this? This makes it sound like a fucking grift. Um, then why aren't you? Why aren't you telling people what they can do in today's day and age to better their lives? Why are you? Why are you looking back to the 1950s? Okay. So, no, I'm not going to go off that. If you care about stable marriages and stable families, why then are you advocating for the enforcement of these roles, which can be detrimental to stable families? And again, who is doing the enforcing? I mean, your side controls virtually all of the messaging in this country. Every institution is promoting your message. I am the dissenting voice, which is why it's not actually a fair opinion to say, well, hookup culture might get in people's brains and compel them to make poor decisions, but John Doyle's over here speaking to an audience of a couple hundred people, and he's actually going to be the one controlling the It's not the just youth. you. No, I think that it's not just you. It's like what I said in my beginning, is that it's not not enforced by law or even by institutions. So who's doing the enforcement? Hold on. It is People socially like enforced. Yeah, by who? There are all of society in many different ways. Society. There are expectations. Where? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we live in a society, okay? Joker. But yes, there are social expectations. You heard the research I read from Pew Research. There I mean, are John far Doyle more even disagree with that this. women adhere to more of these traditional roles. And when men are stay-at-home fathers, for example, that's not seen as as acceptable. Why? I don't think that's absolutely the case. I mean, with your stay-at-home father example, I get that it's a touchy subject, so we will move on from that. But I'm not a stay-at-home dad, John, of if that who helps. who is enforcing all of these you know, gender roles, it doesn't happen. I'm young enough, you're young enough to remember having gone through the public education system, having gone through the cycle of programming to which we were exposed. There was never at any point this like, Ur, girls mm. have to be these like handmaid's tale slaves and they have no, to stay you're, at you're home. No, do, you're, you're doing it. Exactly you're doing the thing where you straw man and make it seem like it nobody's exactly saying you must opposite. not cry or you are a little bitch. Nobody's saying this. It is exactly <laughs> Now, first of all, I recognize that you want to keep going back to the stay-at-home dad thing because it probably bothers you that I have a wife and two children and I'm living the trad life. You're living the mad life. I get it. But <laughs> even more so, I, I, I'm, when I'm talking about these social expectations, they are subtle, John. They're not these uh, in your face telling people that they must agree or must believe this way. They've done studies, for example, where they have asked middle schoolers, draw a picture of a scientist. Virtually everyone in that study draws a picture of a man. There's a reason why these sciences, for example, are perceived as a more masculine career. That is social conditioning, which we can change. Um, the reason that they draw a scientist as a man is something like 90% of scientists are men or something. The Why? Same reason, the Why same is reason, that? Thank you for proving my point. Yes. Because males excel in the higher levels of things like the hard sciences and things like, I mean, even as I read in the intro, the ratio is 13 to 1. Boys that score over 700 on the math section of their SATs compared to women, it's 13 to 1. <coughs> that means it's biological. The same way that women are more likely to pursue things like early education, things like nursing, than are men. That is biological. Also, I just can't believe you're telling what? me the decisions people make are just biological as if it's 100%. not a super complicated hold on 100%. as if there's not a super complicated and nuanced thing that goes on between yes some biology but also social we are all a result of our biology sure. interacting with society. The social the decisions we made are not just purely biological. Of the scientist, the scientist can't be found in nature. That is a social construct. The me uh, construction, the mechanisms in our brain making us want to go towards those things are biological. Those are innate. Also, the quip about you being married and me not. You'll have to refer me to which Norman Rockwell painting depicted you knocking up a woman, walking away, hooking up with another woman, and then going back to her once she was pregnant. I don't think that's very traditional. I will say that I will tell you. Now, it's you. very cute that you have like this tabloid understanding of what happened. Maybe if you've been reading up on some celebrity news, but virtually none of that was true, what you Wrong. just said. But even Wrong. more so, well, I know, it's easier for you to derail into ad homs when you're But even still, obvious it doesn't matter because Hunter's still married with kids. <laughs> like, he's still, he still has you there, but that's okay. Demonstrated to be completely wrong here. 
So men going into sciences is largely because it's expected to be a masculine and male career. Why? Wait, hold on. Women have made massive contributions to the sciences, even in a time when women were not expected to or were even actively discouraged from pursuing those True. things. Now it is more acceptable, but there are still subconscious biases that take place. This is why you can see, like, how, how common is it for a little boy to hear, hey, you should go pursue math. Hey, you should go do science. You should do these things. It's not that they're going to actively say, you're a girl, you can't do it. It's more you know what my son tells me when he uh, when I ask him what he wants to do in life? You know what he tells me? He tells me I want to be a daddy. How fucking based is that? That's what, so he, that, that's what he that tells me. That might just not be encouraged for them. And if we know that something as subtle as, another study I'll reference real quickly, is we know that something as subtle as just having a picture in the textbook that depicts a masculine or a man in, uh, as a scientist is less or it negatively affects women's ability to succeed. There was something that happened in the uh, late 90s called the Scully effect. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but when the X-Files came out, it depicted a female scientist, which wasn't like the first time that happened, but after that, it was called the Scully effect, where a huge increase of girls wanted to be scientists. There is a social component here. It's a lot easier and almost lazier to just say, uh, it's just brains, you know, men are men, women are women, okay? It's a lot more difficult to contend with what we can actually change. Nobody's denying that men and women are free to pursue the roles as they will, but we know that throughout, uh, what is it, 800 BC to 1950 AD, virtually 90 per, or excuse me, 95% of all technological and scientific innova innovation came from European men. The idea that that was happening because they were allowed to, and all these women with all these great ideas were just being shut out of the discussion, is just frankly not true. Also, the idea that negative stereotypes are preventing women from going into these fields, we know that's not true as well. There have been several studies proving that if you discourage women, you can't be a scientist, you can't be a doctor. It literally does not affect either their performance nor uh, their interest in those fields. There was a study, though, recently in 2021 that tried to review all of that and say, no, this actually is the case, and then they got caught fabricating their numbers. In terms of the x Miles thing, maybe, but I mean, that's the 1990s. Look, I mean, you're reaching like the peak of when all this messaging, which I can't Wait, believe you deny nonsense. the fact. Why, why isn't it that men are then willing to take up like, uh, why do some men feel like when they, even though they want to take up like uh, stay at home dads, that they're discouraged from doing so, right? It's from a societal aspect. Like the idea that we can't discourage certain groups of people from doing shit is actually like, it's actually stupid it's retarded that's, there are institutions nice, grants funding all of these organizations telling women you can be a doctor you can be a scientist when's the last time you saw a straight white man in a commercial it doesn't exist there, all of okay. the programming in this country wait, wait, hold on. is I, I recognize that you're it, you're trying to go down the special snowflake route here okay but before we start playing victim, he never left 2016 there are still massive hold on there are still massive amounts of white males on tv okay i i'm pretty confident about that one but again even if these institutions are trying to push forward an idea that women can do it, you're ignoring the social component. There is, in fact, different social expectations and stigmas. And I, again, I keep going back to the stay-at-home dad thing because you're, trying, you're, you're talking out of two sides of your mouth. You're saying there's not really much of a social stigma, but then you're perpetuating the social stigma. You're trying to discourage women from pursuing these career fields. And I don't know why that is. That's women not are not a slave to their First biology. Of all, on the, the stay at home dads thing, I have no jealous. ill will or disrespect towards dads who are staying at home. What I am discouraging is the idea that these roles are malleable and it's a simple coin toss. I am saying that men and women or men and women flourish best when they are following their roles, when they are pursuing what is complementary to them no, in no, their no, nature. No, no. Men and women flourish when they feel like they have purpose and meaning in life and that, that purpose and meaning is being fulfilled. At the end of the day, it honestly God does not matter what that purpose and meaning is as long as you have that purpose and meaning and we know this because that is like that is people's biggest reports of why they feel lonely why they feel lost why they why they don't feel like they fit in with society is that they're lacking the purpose and the meaning and the drive in their lives um so i think it's kind of silly that you would say oh it's just when they're filling their, their roles. It's like, to some degree, you are correct. It is when they're filling their roles. But the roles are arbitrary, and the roles are going to be different from each person. It might be that my role in society is being a stay-at-home dad because it's something that I excel at. It's 50-50. Or it could be that my 
my role in society is working my concrete job because that is where I fill in best for society because it allows me to provide for my family and I feel like my role is being being fulfilled as a as a father and as a parent right um it all depends on how your how your perceived role is is in society and if you're able to find your role and kind of fill into your niche because there might be a lot of like there might be a lot of like traditional dudes that want like a stay-at-home parent right but that they're actually more willing and more suited to be that stay-at-home parent but they just never had an opportunity to try and fill in that role um because they've been told that they can't do it because it's not it's not a man's place to stay at home so works both ways roles. i'm not that changes what a role is and what a role is for a man it has changed significantly and you say that but that's not actually true it may have changed in terms of things like attire aesthetics penis size but what doesn't change is the fundamental role of the man as the protector and the provider even in the, the societies where men are spending the most time with children the nurturers i believe it's like the aka pygmies in in africa even then the males are only spending about 40 minutes a day with the child, and the women are still spending 10 times amount that time. So you can say that, oh, the differences are malleable. The big differences are not. I don't really care what some guy's turtle, hairstyle was. Turtle, what is happening? How you doing, turtle? How long, on average, do men spend with their kids? We'll do USA. Average amount of time parents spend with their kids. Are you a parent that feels guilty about not spending enough time with your kids every day? Perhaps you're chasing money and prestige more than you should. Good news. The average amount of time parents spend with their kids today is shockingly low. The amount of time is so low, it makes me question the veracity of the source. Our world in data.org. The kind of like when you hear it's often cited, 40% of Americans can't come up with $1,000 in an emergency. Is that really true? Uh, okay, we'll go through it, but we'll have to go check it. In our world, data offers the average amount of time parents spend with their kids uh, per day. Ha! <laughs> true. That's not for that's not for us us plebs, fathers, mothers. Wow, fathers have shot up quite a bit. So in this one, in our world data, they have United Kingdom. Oh, we'll switch over. Maybe United Kingdom at you know the women 150 minutes, men 100 minutes, and you can see that we're were uh, steeping and actually it looks like both the univer non-university and university curves are actually well except for in france are actually kind of in the same no they're, they're still lower which is this wouldn't surprise me though the non-university educated you're probably working more menial jobs that require you to work more hours so the university people probably get more time off same again all the way up 100 while wow, the unit the uneducated or the non-university educated women in in Slovenia really get fucked same with holy shit and some of the men their time is decreasing for the uneducated so that's more of like your lower class having issues right Spain is holy shit almost 150 minutes same with not even quite 100 United States they both ticked upwards for both man Denmark's look at Denmark's uh on a non-university educated both men and like um women are like right in line with each other that's super impressive the average amount of time a university educated mom spends with their child is 120 minutes a day. In America, the average amount of time you just read un oh the blah, 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 blah. university educated dad spend with their child is just 85 minutes. Um, non university educated spend about 20 percent less of the time, which isn't surprising. What the hell is going on here with 24 hours a day? How can be average? How can parents be spending on average so little time with under 13 year old children? I'm not sure, but they they must. I would assume by this graph they must for for parents. A uh, typical, typical day for a working parent. Let's say at four years old, your son wakes up at 7 a.m. You greet him good morning, let him go to the bathroom, change clothes, feed him breakfast. That's an hour right there, okay? From 8 a.m. to 8.30, you read him stories and play a few games with him. Now we're at the one and a half hour mark. At 8.30, you drop him off for preschool, even though there's a global... <laughs> oh, gee, Jesus. You pick him up... Jeez Louise. You pick him up at 4 p.m. and you go for another walk after giving him a quick snack. Hey, Callie. Then you play with him 4.30 to 6.30... Now you spent four hours with your son. Wait, you play all the time from 4.30 to 6.30 with him? Holy shit. He eats dinner for 30 minutes with you, and then it's another 40 minutes of play time before bath and teeth brushing. Then you read him a story before going to bed at 8 p.m. Tallied up, you spent a total of five and a half hours with your son, who has also got preschool. 
that's 330 minutes versus the average 55 yeah but we're talking about the average like this is this is pretty this is pretty privileged this is this is not a typical day for a working parent fuck off show me the data on that this is more like you're waking your son up at 7 a.m to get them to fucking daycare for 7 30 who the fuck is getting their their four-year-old up at like this must be some nine to five shit but even then it's not because you're picking up this is a fucking stay-at-home parent how the fuck is this a working parent this isn't a working parent this is a fucking stay-at-home parent a typical day for the stay-at-home parent okay now i'm now i'm super curious who i'm super curious what's the typical day in this guy's mind for a fucking stay-at-home parent oh shit the kid's a year older than yet now it's three okay your darn your day may start at seven and end at 8 p.m that's 13 hours you are not spending, as a stay-at-home parent, a full 13 hours with your fucking kid. Unless there's, like, literally nowhere else for that kid to go. And even then, your kid should be playing alone with them, with them, like, playing alone for still a good portion of that, okay? Um, let's say you're supposed to grandparent helps you out for four hours a day. That's still nine hours. <laughs> uh, let's say both parents retire early. Even if you split the time 50-50, that's six and a half hours of 390 minutes of time. With your child spent a day. I do not believe there is no fucking way this is the typical day for a working parent. Um, and I don't know why they wouldn't do four years old here too for a typical day of a stay-at-home parent. Because a four-year-old is still going to preschool. This, honest to God, this sounds like the typical day for a stay-at-home parent when your child is four. And this is probably a typical day for when your child is three. But it's going to change, right? And the big thing is, is like, okay... How old were the kids in this study? Did they say under 13? You know that you know what probably really starts to drop this shit when your kid enters school. Right? Because I noticed that he goes it says under 13, but he's talking about a 4-year-old and a fucking 3-year-old. The two groups of children that require the most fucking time. The most time. Oh my god, those kids require so much fucking time it's in my discord <laughs> having two stay-at-home parents is overkill it's better to have at least one parent go to work full-time to improve the household's finances how the fuck could you have two stay-at-home parents how the fuck could you have two stay-at-home parents unless you literally have fucking skrilla for days Don't feel guilty working instead of parenting. Uh, I beg to differ. You should be parenting. You should be trying to balance it. <laughs> Nowhere near. 30s, 45? Oh boy, we're fucking behind the eight ball on that one, boys. Oh, we fucked. No, we were just, it was just comparative with other country. We were just curious. Um, I was just curious on how, how often I fucking don't remember. How did this come up? What is statue? Oh, the difference a day with the Chinese and men are spending the most time with children, the nurturers. I believe it's like the Aka pygmies in, in Africa. Even then, the males are only spending about 40 minutes a day. Oh, so he was saying that they were spending the most, but that's not at all the case. You have United Kingdom at 100 minutes, Canada at 100 minutes, France at like almost 50 minutes, Germany uh, probably 70 minutes, Denmark over 100 minutes, Italy over almost 100. Like John Doyle is just so fucking wrong. He's so stupid <laughs> in everything he fucking does. It's With just child. it's and depressing. Spending 10 times amount that time. So you can say that, oh, the differences are malleable. The big differences are not. I don't really care what some guy's hairstyle was or what his statue was looking like. The biological reality of our okay. situation. He's still been mad about Greek small penises. Has articulated, has remained the, the same. And it's only changing, not in that all of a sudden women are becoming men and things like that. It's just that now they're not attracted to each other and they're not getting married because of that actual social pressure and actual social conditioning, which you seem to want to ignore. No, this When's is, the last there's time a reason why people are getting married later. Again, it can largely be attributed to economic reasons we can't again we can't just point to a problem and just blame whatever we want to blame it's largely oh, because of economic reasons done it, why people are getting married later in life 
And again, I am not denying biology. Oh. Keep going back to this. The last part However, of this picture, boys. You're really going to tell me that there was, or excuse me, sorry. There was a time when it was masculine to cry. There was a time when what it meant to be a man, how you were expected to behave, was different. Just if there are some similarities as far as the protective nature, I'm fine with that. Again, a lot of that can be attributed to, yes, biology, testosterone. If you are stronger and by protecting your family, you need to be physically able to fight someone off, yeah, the male's probably going to be the protector. Who do you think would win in a fight? <laughs> if he's rich in actual <laughs> true, true turtle you're right who do you think would win in a fight hunter avalon or john doyle john doyle's looking pretty beefy but i don't know if that's because of his suit or uh because he works out what do we think what do we think we want to want to play some bets want to play some bets i feel like hunter avalon would be a little bit of a better i think it would be more towards the winning side um just because i think hunter would just uh, audience wins true I think uh, Hunter would just call him a chuckle fuck and, you know, a kick protector. his ass. No shit. However, that's, one, not necessarily the case nowadays. And, two, we would then want to talk about what does it even mean to be the protector? There are different ways to protect a family. Not all of it is physical protection. True. And so what it means to be a man, how men are expected to behave, has changed. It's different. Nowadays, boys Ooh. are not. One thing when um... – you could actually see like emotional protection or helping people regulate with their emotions as a form of, of protecting their kids, right? Because realistically, if you have a child that is like thinking of suicide, there's obviously an emotional issue there that needs to be uh, dealt with, um, whether there's like actual chemical imbalances, depression, things like that. And it'd be kind of really neat to see um, the idea perpetuated in society that men need to be able to protect themselves from well not even protect themselves from emotions but protect themselves from inappropriate emotions um and kind of protect um other men and other people from um inappropriate or unhealthy emotions i mean it would feed in it would feed a little bit he looks like a university professor it would feed in a little bit to like this protective idea that obviously a lot of people that follow with john doyle um think but i and i can only assume that most of them would take it in the worst toxic way possible but it'd be kind of a neat idea nonetheless boom look at this sucker done it's beautiful this is actually unironically my best piece of art holy shit look at this fucking thing it's fucking beautiful i love it it turned out so well <clears throat> Now I don't know what to do. That was my Magnus Opum. That was it. It's done. It's done. I'm free. I'm free. And this conversation is just emotion. It's considered very weak. It's considered feminine. Ugh. It's considered girly. But yet, Times I point to the example. Fuck. I don't even want to watch that anymore. Oh, public hearing will resume shortly. Had... Don't care. Crazy how she um, care. likes to invent all these new don't care i do not care anymore man now i don't know what i want to do i don't know if i want to If I want watch something else, I want to continue drawing, play some video games. I might go see what the mother-in-law is up to, see if she needs a hand. And then uh, kind of chill out by myself for a little bit. Get some more get some more alone time. Maybe I'll come back on later. We'll play some Divinity tonight. Because, um, yeah, there's just nothing worth, uh, nothing worth going over right now. So... <laughs> um, That was two weeks ago. Okay. Okay, guys. I'm going to go. Peace out. We'll see you. We'll see you later. Okay. Peace. Much love.